weirdly into the countdown now. But anywho, hello, good morning or good evening or good day, wherever you're coming from. Yes, today we are setting up layouts in such a tiny notebook. Isn't it so cute? I thought it was fairly timely for this considering, you know, Archer and Olive Subbox, we've got a couple journals in that that, uh, you know, the content that we're going through today may be useful for. Let me know, are you going to be journaling along with us? Are you just, you know, hanging out for the vibes? Either is cool. But yes, we are going to be setting up some layouts in the tiny notebook. I'm probably going to be keeping this fairly minimal just because I feel like if you're the kind of person who's using a tiny notebook, you probably don't want to be doing a lot of decoration. That might be a big assumption, but I'm just thinking that for the sake of being able to utilize the space as well as we can because it is distinctly smaller, we should probably kind of par back, only do the kind of minimalistic bare necessity type things. So we've got our notebook, notably. I'm going to be using my trusty pen because I love it. We're going to have a ruler because <laughs> you know I love a straight line. Probably a pencil as well because sketching things in first is a good idea. This was the eraser that came in the Archer and Olive sub box from last time? June? And I recently fished it out so that I could prop up the side of my notebook for things, but it's actually quite a good eraser, so we'll use that one. Probably a micron as well for some, you know, waterproof line work, and then a dot marker and a grey Tombow in, in 95, one of my favourites, the good light grey type thing. Yeah, one sticker is the full page, that's kind of the vibe, eh? <laughs> like, it's wonder wondering, like, you know, can we actually fit decoration in here? Might be a little tricky. Now scooping this all over to the side because technically speaking I do actually have a what a6 or pocket size journal that I use for myself it's this one here this is what I call my self-care journal so it's like sparkle and shine yes that's me uh, so in here I've written myself a little kind of note at the front as to what this is supposed to be used for kind of a thing so the idea is that I could use this to journal any thoughts and feels whether they be like positive or not so positive if I was you know going through something we're not going to really flip through this because uh, some of the thoughts are fairly personal <laughs> but if I flip to a page here you can see that sometimes I just use it for sticker work general decoration because I'm just feeling a little bit crafty and don't really feel like putting thoughts down onto the page but feel like putting something down onto the page. So I'll just do little kind of sticker collages and shameless creation type thing. I did have a couple of little journal bits in there but again it is fairly personal so we're probably not going to have a look at that one. So that is one way you can use a tiny notebook like this, make it for a very low-key personal notes. I think the nice part about a size like this for that type of use is that it's a lot less daunting. Uh, I find that long-form journaling isn't really how I typically like to record stuff, but something this size, you know, nice and small, like the size of your hand, or the size of your pocket, considering it's a pocket-sized notebook, can just be a little bit less, I don't know, daunting, uh, challenging, I guess. Now, tiny notebook here. I was thinking about using the one from the sub box, but that one has 192 pages or something. It is a little chonk journal. It's quite cute. I thought that 112 was probably going to be fine. Not that I intend on filling up 112 pages with the ideas that we're setting up. But yes, I'm glad that some of you are catching a live for the first time. That's very exciting. Thank you for being here. So on the inside cover, we do have This Book Belongs To, uh, which is distinctly smaller than our typical ones. Like if I get my, my square journal, which is like not even really fitting in the shot. There we go. Just fits, maybe. And have a look at its This Book Belongs To. You can see that we have a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> decent size difference between the two of these but we'll put our name in the front of the journal it's a good place to start technically speaking I have actually already started in this one uh, I, I went through and started doing some kind of sketching in just to to see what I could set up in here and get a feel for the size before we started because you guys don't want to watch me counting stuff do you like let's see Jess Jess is a, a good way to do this da -da -da. E, S, S, there we go, we'll do some stars, little sparkles, because it's cute and we like it, a couple little circles, 
There we are. Da -da -da. I have a tendency to, when I do these dots, do them in sets of three, kind of making a little triangle. There we go. It's kind of cute. We've christened the journal, even though we've technically already started it. <laughs> there we go. So I'm kind of treating this journal like I'm not going to be using it myself. This is really just for ideas so that if people want to use an A6 journal, they, they have some kind of layout inspiration. So I'm loosely taking ideas from the travel traveler size that we uh, did this type of thing with. So when this journal arrived to me, I decided to use the other items that came with it to make some kind of layout ideas so people could kind of see how they would use it. So we're going to be doing a similar thing in this this little guy here. So things like a future log, things like, you know, a different style of future log, because again, it was an ideas video. I wouldn't typically put two future logs in my journal, but still, uh, year and pixels, things to do, weekly trackers, all of that kind of stuff. Notably, it will be less uh, punchy in terms of the color because we are going a little bit more minimal with this one. But the first thing that I set up in here was just a year at a glance. So showing that you can fit six months on one page uh, because we have eight centimeters across and each of these little calendars only takes up three and a half centimeters across. We do have a centimeter gap in the middle here, which is kind of nice. So technically speaking, you could put the week numbers in if you wanted to, but then your calendars would butt right up against each other. So you'd probably want to have some kind of like visual divider, like a ruled line or something <laughs> to show you where one starts and the other one um, stops. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. But you can do it. Uh, it, it is totally viable. And then flipping over, we're going to do a little future log. I'm going to keep this one fairly simple. Uh, I'm just going to do an initial for each of the months. So some, some people prefer in their future logs to have a calendar view, uh, at least like a small one or a mini calendar that goes with it. But because we've just set up the year at a glance here, I don't think it would be super necessary. Uh, of course, this is just one example, but anywho. So, May and June. I'm just going to put the initials in rather than writing out the full month because you'll have quite a variance in terms of how far across they go. Like I could do the first three initials, but I think it'll look a little bit cleaner and you'll get more use out of the space if I just do the initials. Yeah. Let's see. We have a channel on the community discord for our long term journals. Yes, we do. We like seeing all the things that people put in their long term collections. I need to, I don't need to, but I would like to set up more long-term collections. Uh, my long-term collections journal previously, like last year, I felt like he felt a bit neglected. Um, like he wasn't getting a lot of play. Uh, but this year we have actually been setting some stuff up in there, which is quite nice to see. Yeah. I don't expect it to fill up fast at all because the idea is that it is the kind of thing that I keep for a long time and it's reference materials that I would like to reference over a longer period of time. And there's not necessarily a lot, a lot of stuff that would fit into that category. Right, we flip this guy around. Uh, for my Micron that I'm using here, I'm just using the O3 size because I thought it would be nice to have some thinner lines compared to what I usually do. Usually if I'm doing ruled lines in my journal, I'll use something like an 08 which is a fair bit thicker. I like I like thicker lines for my ruling. But because this is such a little journal, I thought it would be nicer if it was a little bit more kind of like delicate feeling, I suppose. It's dainty. It's a dainty little journal. There we go. So the idea with this future log is that then underneath each of these lines, you know, before the next one, you could list out future events that are happening. Um, or you could use it as some kind of like a memories log kind of a thing if a future log isn't really your vibe. So, you know, list out your January memories like, oh, we went to so-and-so's house. We went and did X, Y, Z. I hit some kind of milestone, blah, da, 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 that kind of stuff. So we'll put in some dots. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Three, four, 
five, six. So then these would be the spaces that people would be recording that information. And if it were for memories, you could also use little symbols to indicate what type of a memory it was. Kind of like in my five-year journal, where I use like a little tick to say this was a uh, an action that I was taking as related to a goal or something like that. Or a little uh, cross to say it was a challenge experienced. I'll show you what I made. I've got it here. So you can use a little key like this. So it's like tick is a win, you know, usually a goal related win. Um, X is a challenge, little arrow is a way to improve, uh, highlight a milestone for an exclamation point, and a general happening for a dot and a connection moment with a little heart, that kind of thing. So it could be used in that way. That is an idea. You know, Deb did this great job of reminding us to change it from <laughs> top chat to live, and I didn't do it. Whoops. <laughs> so I'm probably missing comments. I apologize if I've missed a, a question or a comment. We do have a question here. So what is the GSM for the paper? In, assuming you're talking about this journal, uh, this one is from Archer and Olive. It is 160 GSM, so nice thick paper. Uh, won't bleed or ghost or anything like that, at least with the materials that I am using. I want to erase the pencil lines, but I also want to be cautious because I know my ink joy has been a little bit juicy recently. It has been causing some smudge, which makes me sad. We don't want smudges in the tiny example journal. It makes for a less aesthetic experience. Alrighty. So cute, so cute. but. I think that it would be really cool to see what people plan on using these journals for. I saw somebody mention previously the idea of like a projects journal for a, like crafting or a hobby or something like that. And I think that would be really cool because um, it's the kind of thing that it's so small that you can just like, you know, chuck it in your crafting bag or like, you know, project bag of whatever type of project you like to do. Uh, take it around with you, which is very exciting. So we've got our year at a glance. We've got our little future log slash memories log, whichever you want to use it for. Flipping over, this one here says that it's a calendex. Technically speaking, it could be used as some kind of a challenge uh, kind of layout or something like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up kind of like a, a month per row and then each of the columns is a day. Yeah? Um, so I'm going to need a ruler for this one. Uh, so the reason that we're doing it so that there's a row for each of the months is because you can't actually fit 31 spaces down in this notebook. This notebook is too small for that, um, or at least too small in that direction. Uh, it only fits 26 down and that's if you don't have a header. So you need a slightly different layout to accommodate that. So what I'm doing here is that I have, I think, two centimeters or four rows per month. And the idea would be that you could use it in a calendex style to log when things are happening. It's just like a different version of a future log, effectively. We do have a separate video on the channel that talks a little bit more about the calendex. But effectively, it's the cross between an index and a calendar. So rather than writing out descriptions of the events that you have going on for each of the days and each of the months and whatnot, uh, you instead put a page number reference that you can use to to go and have a look at what details there are for that event. And you'll rule all the way across. So I think in terms of across, yep, yeah, we've got eight centimeters. Uh, so you have enough space for 16 days. I do not like bending my ruler like this. <laughs> We're going to prop up the side of the notebook with the tiny eraser. Because my ruler is just like, no, this is not the way that I like to flex. Please stop. <laughs> Here we go. Now I have seen some people do this where they go and draw all of the vertical lines in to separate each of the days as well. I am not going to do that <laughs> because I'm, I mean, as, as I said, this is just an example, like an ideas kind of journal. I will put some dividing lines to separate the weeks though, so you can see kind of the week blocks. 
um, kind of similar to how I've set up my calendex in my current journal. Wee. Smack. <laughs> yeah, weird flex. Indeed. Don't want that kind of weird flex from my journal. Kind of, yeah, it's not supposed to bend. It's not a bendy ruler. I mean, I don't really, like, I can understand the, uh, benefit of bendy rulers, you know, for not breaking as easily. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure that over time they start becoming, uh, less straight. And considering what I use a ruler for majoritively is drawing straight lines. That would bother me. That would make me not happy. I'm going to flip you around because ruling off the edge of the journal is not an easy place to be in. There we go. Ooh, yeah. Quote book. That sounds cool. Uh, let's see what else you guys have got. Book journal. That would be really cute. I like the idea of a quote book. That'd be quite cute. I'm thinking that we're going to have to set up some kind of a, uh, an example of how you could possibly use this as kind of like a commonplace notebook type thing. I think that a pocket sized commonplace notebook would be a great idea because it's the kind of thing that you can take around with you very easily. So let's see. Me, me baby. Do you remember those rubber bendy rulers? Yeah, I know they were they were not so useful. Eh? They were very popular, uh, but not so useful. <laughs> I never got one. Um, didn't mean I didn't want one because <laughs> younger Jess was stricken with FOMO constantly. <laughs> the FOMO always got the better of her. Um, but that didn't mean that she actually had the funds and ability to go out and get these things for herself. <laughs> so she was kind of safe, kind of safe. So over this side, we can write in that this is for January. So we'll just use big initials again. And February, March, April, May, and June. So you could cut this down so that then it's only a centimeter for each of the uh, months and then you'll have enough for the full 12 months. Uh, I just decided to do it for six months because I did a six month view here and a six month view here. So, you know, we can, we can just assume that this person, hypothetical person, is keeping their uh, tiny A6 journal for just half a year. Maybe they go through two a year, that kind of thing. So we can erase some pencil lines to make it neat. And then we're going to need to put in some numbers for each of the days of each of the months. And those will go along the top. What is a commonplace book? I'm kind of new to journals. Fair. So I haven't done huge amounts of research on it yet, but I do want to kind of look into it. But my general thinking is that it's, yeah, a book that's used for things like uh, book quotes, thoughts, lyrics, little pieces of information that you find, that kind of stuff. It's kind of a, oh, it's, yeah, it's like a second brain, effectively. <laughs> Like, yeah, and I, I want to, I really want to read, um, I think it's Tiago Forte's book about building a second brain. I think that his is digitally done and I think that that's probably what I would tend towards. Uh, maybe use Notion for it or something, but I, um, I'm very curious about the concept of it. Because I feel like we find these little pieces of information in different places, uh, whether they be, you know, book quotes or... Uh, things we've read online or, you know, something that we've watched and it sparked an idea or whatever else. And then I just let myself forget them kind of a thing. Uh, you, you get the, the opportunity to have this little piece of inspiration and then it just slips away because something else steals away your attention. So in that respect, I think that doing a commonplace notebook in an actual notebook would be a great idea because paper is a little bit more forgiving in terms of it trying to steal your attention. It doesn't, doesn't have notifications. <laughs> uh, whereas computers and things online do. So shrug. But I also know that I, I don't like writing, <laughs> which is great considering I have an entire channel dedicated to writing in a notebook and whatever. But when it comes to writing down ideas and stuff like that, I do prefer to keep them digitally so that then I can organize them in different ways. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Now it wasn't on our list of things that we're going to use, 
but I am going to grab a gray Stetler Tri Plus Mine Liner. Not this one, though. Because <laughs> that one's special. Uh, this one instead. There we go. Not special. So, we're going to put in some dividing lines just to show where the weeks are. So, Monday of next year, or rather the first day of next year starts on a Monday. So, that makes it kind of nice for this first row here. And then we're going to need to go and look at some calendars so I can see when the other ones are supposed to be. Here we go. Looks cute. Okay, yeah, struggle with writing small, that's completely fair. I think that for people who have larger handwriting, this type of book might be a little bit tricky to use for the irregular planning type things. Um, but there are probably other uses that we can have for it that are less like that. Like for instance, my just sticker collaging. <laughs> the nice part about having a smaller book for sticker collaging is that you get to use less stickers for it, which is quite good. Um, let's see, the next month, February, it's right here, uh, the fourth is where we get to the new month. One, two, three, four. There we go, put that there, wind it up and rule that in. So this marker just kind of gets us to <laughs> easily split the different weeks. So it's a little bit easier to use this calendar. I know some people like to highlight the weekend days. Uh, I find that this is fine though. So that's exactly the same thing that I'm using in my current journal for my uh, calendex. You can see that I've just sectioned them all off with those little dividing lines. So I can see where one week starts slash stops kind of a thing. Um, is it a possible that you can make a grid ruler for an A6 journal someday? I mean, yes. Uh, like, technically speaking, we're gonna have a grid spacing guide in here. Um, I mean, we have a grid spacing ruler type calculator thing. Uh, that's a product in the shop though. But it, it's good for any journal size uh, because you just input what your vertical and horizontal spacing is and it just does all the calculation for you. So that means that if you change notebooks or notebook brands, it can change with you, which is kind of nice. So we'll put that there. And then one, two, three, four, five. Kind of got to be careful because this space in the middle is actually no man's land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Technically speaking, I could have used those middle ones as well. I just didn't think about it at the time. <laughs> I'm glad that the calculator is awesome. I, um, yeah, I, I, I like to make things that are actually helpful for people and hopefully people found it actually helpful. Uh, I, I know I personally do because <laughs> I use it anytime I am working in a journal that isn't a size that I'm super familiar with. Uh, because I've used an A5 for such a long time, especially in particular an A5 from Art Journal of, I'm really familiar with what the grid spacing is and how to divide it in different directions and whatnot. Um, but working in something like this, for instance, where I'm just quite, quite a bit less familiar uh, with what the spacing is, it can just be quite helpful to have, have something there to help you out. Two, four, six, seven, two, four, Five, six, seven. It's just one before each of them. There we go. Put those in. One thing that always trips me up uh, with the like the calendex, or at least you know drawing out a calendar style like this, where you do the little divisions to represent the the weeks, um, is when February has twenty eight days. So you have two months that sit right next to each other, where the lines are in the same place, and it looks it looks odd compared to the rest of the calendar, even though it's technically correct. <laughs> it's not technically correct, um, but we don't have that problem this time around because this time around it is twenty nine days. Okay, excellent. So you are starting on the first as well. So you just line up with. January, nice and simple. Love a straightforward line transfer. But 
you're also 30 days, so that means that the February should not line up. There we go. Hmm. Yeah. It's one of those things that, you know, I take a lot of, um, with setting up these idea layouts and whatnot. It's a little bit less time consuming in that I know I'm not going to use it so it doesn't have to be perfect but at the same time I want it to look good for the actual idea video so I do take a bit of time with it for that reason it's kind of a balancing act I don't want to spend you know, a huge huge amount of time on it because I'm not going to use it myself but I want it to be like good and correct enough so that people can actually get inspiration from it if that kind of makes sense one, two, three. And that was something I had to remind myself of quite a lot while I was trying to find ideas for this because as I was setting it up I was like oh yeah I can use this for blah 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 and I can use this for blah 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 and I'm thinking Jess you're not actually going to use it so I kind of started um pruning back ideas because I'm like oh no I don't know how I'm going to use that one like how would I actually use that layout but this isn't for me so it's it's just to show other people what they could do with the tiny journal so we want to put it in so that then they have those ideas think of the people you try and find your line that you put in which is hard to spot right now here we go that looks good So before I mention the idea that you can use this for a calendex or you could use it for some kind of challenge. So for instance, maybe it could be, uh, you know, the idea of did or did not do. That one's quite an easy challenge. Uh, you just color in each little section for each little day to say, yes, I did the thing or no, I did not do the thing. Uh, so that, one, that one's fairly straightforward. Um, but what you also could do is something like a scale amount. For instance, we have four little boxes for each of these so maybe it could be you know four occurrences of doing something or taking a task and splitting it into four amounts that kind of thing so for instance let's just say that you are aiming to do 20 minutes of exercise each day right like that's a fine goal so we'd take the 20 minutes and we'd split it into four equal sized blocks so five minutes each so let's just say on the first day you do your full 20 minutes then you could color in that full block to say yep I did the 20 minutes I am a wizard and then maybe on the next day you manage to get through 15 and you're just like I'm actually done so you could only color in three blocks to say yep I did my 15 minutes still got it done though I'm a wizard and then maybe on the third day something happened you couldn't do any so you just color in none and then on the fourth day we went back to doing 20 and we'd color that in so on and so forth so it could be that type of thing making it kind of like a uh, like value or like a, an amount of something done or it could be a habit tracker type thing where you have four habits in particular that you're tracking to say that you you are getting them completed and you can just tick them off to say which ones are actually getting accomplished like these are all the ways that you could use this it doesn't have to be a calendar it's just possibilities um future new idea live showing us how to adapt the same layout in all sizes good question um a lot of these, I probably, okay, if we're doing a video like that, it would probably have to be focused on one particular layout rather than all of them because otherwise we will sit here for seven hours. And as much as I would love to sit here for seven hours, I feel like the target audience for that is slim. <laughs> yep, still got it done. I'm a wizard. <laughs> so this is the Calendex. In theory, can be used as a Calendex, could also be used for other things. Flipping on over though. This one I wanted to have a 24 in 2024. So that's kind of like a, a gamified goal challenge type thing. So we'll have some little boxes over here that people can either draw in or stamp in or write out what their little goals are. Because I love I love a little grid. It's just cute. Um, and they don't technically need to, they could just number them. That's fine as well. It doesn't need to be super decorative. Um, I'll kind of show you an example of what I mean once we draw up this grid but because there isn't 
a huge amount of space to actually write in the boxes. I also have the list on the side here that they could use to write out what those goals actually were and then check them off as they happen or write in the date that they happened or whatever else. So we will rule in our tiny grid. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One, one video per layout. Um, one layout per video. Wait, yeah, whichever. Whichever way around makes sense. <laughs> it is Monday morning. Also, tink. Yeah, separate videos on different size notebooks. Could be that kind of a thing. So, for instance, if we're thinking about, you know, same layout, different sizes. Um, 24 in 2024 20, is very similar to a layout that I have in my current notebook, which is 24 before 2024. It's just 24 is a really nice number because uh, it's divisible by so many different things, which means that you can fit it into various journal spaces quite nicely, which is good. So in this one, we're doing, what, four columns and eight rows? I can do math. I can do quick math. She hoped. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's six. Don't, don't lie to me. Don't, don't, don't lie to yourself, Jessica, about your ability to do math. I was like, eight. That seems like too much. And there's like cogs ticking over. <laughs> Whoops. Hopefully one of my uh, 24 before 2024 is not to get better at quick math. Oh dear. <laughs> here we go. So we've got the little grid here and then we'll show you an example of kind of what I mean by how you could use this because this is how I am using it in my current journal. So mine's a before 2024 list. We've just got a grid of the same kind of size, quote, quote, but you know, this one's distinctly smaller. So you don't have to write a whole bunch of stuff in to the tiny grid because it is distinctly smaller. So you could write beside it what each of those things were and then just draw either a little kind of doodle or a decorative bit or put a stamp or a number or like, it doesn't need to be anything crazy. Yeah. Yes, yes, patrons or team members do have access to a spreadsheet where you can plan your layouts based on journal size. And if you are a team member and your journal size is not included in that, you just let me know. I will I will update it and make sure that your journal size is in there. So we have our tiny grid looking cute. This is the list where they could write out what those things actually were. So I'm just going to continue our header over. 24 in 2024 yeah so it could just be numbering the boxes and then coloring them in as they happen or it could be writing in them drawing it out anything like that very cute so that one's i guess finished finito so when i did the ideas in this one i actually filled in the layouts uh, I don't know, do I want to fill in the layouts of this one to kind of show what we mean? I feel like it's it's easier to see how a layout works if you've actually got an example of how it works, right? Um, hmm. Question regarding the magic spreadsheet. Uh, if you are on YouTube, It'll be, I think there's a link to it in the welcome post that we have. Um, yeah, every month I put out a welcome post for our, our new persons to the team and also a uh, like kind of rundown of the perk schedule and stuff like that. And there should be a link on that post. Yes, flipping over. So on this one, we have already got something set up because as I said, I wanted to get in here and get a feel for it before we really got into it. So this is uh, kind of like a weekly timeline type thing. This is the timeline. This is more like things to do on a weekly basis. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then every week kind of tasks at some point. So you could section out to say like, these are the things that I try and get done on each day of the week. That was my thinking. On the other side, though, is where we're going to have a little kind of like timetable type deal. So we're going to rule up a grid for that. Oh, 
I think it probably would be good to have some examples of how these work in there. So maybe we can go and make some fake plans for our fake person. I think that me not wanting to put stuff in here comes back to that idea of like, oh, how could I use this for, for reals, not for fakes? And it's like, Jess, you're not going to use it. If you want to use the layout, you will be a lot more intentional about it and you will go and set it up in a different notebook and you will use that one. But this, I was very hesitant to use this notebook in particular because it came in the, um, I think it was the September 2021 Archer and Olive subscription box and it came as a trio. So there was this guy who's what navy outside and then white pages and then we have one that was kind of like a it looked like a denim journal. It was really cute and that one had craft pages and then they had a little gray um, gray covered notebook that had blackout pages and uh I know some people use them for swatch books, which is a very cool idea because then if you've got things like paint pens, you can see how they uh, how they swatch out on different types of paper, which is just a nifty idea. Love the idea of one of these being a little swatch book. So we'll probably have to draw out a little swatch type page as well. I wanted to have some kind of a flip out too, because I always like to put a flip out in these idea videos. Boink. There we go. So for this one, each of the columns is the day of the week. And then down the side, we're going to write out the numbers for, you know, different times of the day. Starting at 7 a.m., I think. And every centimeter will be an hour. Because, I don't know, we do have sleep hours on here. Like, you could technically make it a 24-hour type thing uh, with a header. But... I don't see the point of recording a schedule for times when you're going to be asleep. I mean, that is provided you have a schedule where uh, there is a set time of each day that you are sleeping. Like, you could have some kind of a schedule where you have, I don't know, night shifts or something like that. And it very much varies depending on what day of the week it is. But I think for most people, again, might be an assumption... Uh, for most people, there is a kind of set period of a 24-hour, you know, time that they are asleep. 7 a.m. 8 a.m. I think that's the nice part about, you know, bullet journaling and making your own planner and stuff as well, is that pre-printed planners, if they have a time scale, it usually has uh, maybe from... 5 or 6 a.m. because they all assume that we're all early risers uh, up until you know, sometime in the evening. But that's not necessarily a time scale that actually works for everybody. Whoop, that was close. Almost wrote 12 a.m. <laughs> 1 p.m. 2 p.m. 3 p.m. 4 p.m. 5 Six, seven, eight. So the idea would be that this is kind of the uh, weekly timetable schedule-esque type thing. And then these are the tasks that you're trying to do on each day of the week. So you can kind of see like, alrighty, my tasks for home are to do the laundry on Tuesdays or like whatever. Um, and then this is the block of time that I've sectioned out for doing that type of thing on Tuesday. So that's when I plan to get it done. There we go. And we will probably have to put in some examples here, but we're just, we're just setting up layouts at the moment. But that's looking pretty cute. So we've got each of the days, the time scale, and then the little tasks over here, over here. And then we flip over, Hoppa. So on this one, we are doing monthly tasks and then weekly tasks. I'm going to go and put the dots in first because I can. Uh, I already sectioned out where each of those dots are going to go. So for this one, I went along that idea of them being uh, a six month journal. So each row of dots here is 13 dots. So times two, 26, half a year. Uh, so the idea for this one is that each of the dots represents a week. And then you could tick off once you've done each of the tasks in that week. Uh, 
that idea of kind of routinizing our lives a little bit and keeping on top of stuff that we're supposed to do on a semi-regular basis. Wah, wah. Um, so I, uh, I have one of these in my yearly collections journal, except for the fact that like, because it's a yearly collections journal, it does have all 52 weeks of the year rather than just 26. Um, and then I just go in and check off when I do or when I haven't done certain things. But yeah, so the idea here is that each of these dots represents a week and then you just tick off when you have done the thing or cross off to say, no, I did not do the thing. So we're going to need some weekly habit type things that we can write in here as examples. And I think that I want to have one per life area because the side down, like here on the left, uh, I was just going to do a little kind of icon or something to represent the habit, I suppose. Um, so we could have like a little, like if that's three, there we go. Go a little house for a home task, that kind of thing. Uh, and then this one could be a little heart for like time spent with friends or family or something like that. I know that these look like they're not centered very well, but that's because we're going to write in what the habit is above each of these. So for instance, throws pen lid, rude. Uh, this one could be, you know, do a 20 minute tidy or something. And then this one could be time spent with friends. Really depends on what kind of habits you're trying to build. E N D S. Uh, what else? So. I kind of want them to be different so that I can have different symbols for them. <laughs> uh, let's see. It could just be like intentional exercise time. And I know that we're supposed to do more, more exercise than just once a week, but I don't care. <laughs> like this is this is an example journal and also you know for some of us getting one workout in a week is actually quite an achievement so i will have no nelly naysayers come all up in here being all like me 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 me, me. that's exactly what they sound like too me 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 i mean time and nature oh i love that yep yep we'll do that and we can make that a flower i like i like flowers unless they're trying to get me all like hay fevered or something Flower, that's cute. There we go. Time in nature. And also, you know, coming back to the idea of theming a journal, because I like the idea of a theme journal. Uh, given the fact that mine is all about self-care, these could be little weekly self-care habits, that kind of a thing. Um, taking out the bins. Right, yep. Take out bins. We can have a little bin. That's cute. There we go. There's a little bin. And, hmm, hmm. Yeah, see, one hour of exercise, I, mm, <laughs> that's not going to be a regular occurrence for me, eh? <laughs> meal planning, love it. Alrighty, we're going to put meal planning in. Excellent. And then we're just going to draw in a little kind of plan 
That looks like a plan to me. Looks cute. Love it. So the idea is that we have each of those little weekly tasks and then we can just tick off when they've been done. Ha 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 ha. Love it. Yeah, low tech, no tech days. I like that. I am not very good at doing those. <laughs> if I am completely honest. Uh, I am an all tech everyday type person. So on this other side though, we're going to have a little monthly task list. And I kind of liked the idea of these two being together. Like technically speaking, if we grab out from my other journal, which are all on my desk at the moment, it seems. Um, so I have a kind of version of this in my, um, not that one, not my future me problems. Um, we are what we repeatedly do. So it's like, these are the months of the year. These are all the tasks that I'm supposed to do. And then I just dot off to say, yes, I did or didn't do them. We're just going to ignore the fact that bathroom cleaning looks absolutely abysmal. Like it's just not a vibe, but that's not to say my bathroom isn't clean. It's just that I only check it off if I do like one big intentional clean of the bathroom and I don't typically do it all at once. So it doesn't get checked off like that anyway. Yes, me justifying my bad bathroom cleaning habits to the internet. Ugh. So for the monthly task list, I'm going to do some horizontal lines and vertical lines using the little Tombow. Me Tombow. And just take it nice and slowly, but also not too slowly. I do wish that the grey dot marker was a better colour match for this pen that I'm using. I do technically have another grey dot marker, but I still don't think it's quite right. Uh, maybe, question mark. I can't remember if it's darker or lighter. What colour are you, friend? You are the light platinum. Yeah, so you are the lighter of the two, anywho. But you're still quite a warm tone grey. And I thought it was cool tone, so I picked out the N95. Though, possibly, should have picked out the N89. N89 is like a warm tone grey compared to a cool tone. Uh, but it is still very light. And I typically tend towards the N89 over the N95 nowadays. Like, N95, this guy here. Uh, which is a little bit more cool tone grey. That was... Kind of like the old reliable. <laughs> the old reliable. Let's see. Can I... Da -da. So the nice part about doing this grid is that anywhere that you go over twice with the pen darkens up a little bit. Uh, you can see that that one went a little bit cattywampus, but it's fine. Here we go. So we have that little grid that shows us the different months and then the tasks will get listed on the side here. Here we go. So January, February, March, April, May, June. Now if you were doing this for uh, 12 months, I think that you wouldn't really have a lot of room to write your task in. <laughs> <laughs> so you might want to either use a very abridged version or possibly like symbols or something like that. But going along the idea of this just being for six months, we've got just those six months here. So, change from our to learn our task. Cute. We'll put little dots down the side here. So we can show where each of those entries would sit. Excellent. Beautiful. Excellent. So, monthly tasks, weekly tasks. <gasps> Hi, Erin. Such a pleasure to have you here. I miss you too. <laughs> Can someone tell the guy sneezing outside my front my open window to move along? Wow. I hope that he's okay. That's a lot of sneezing to be doing. Oof. Let's see. So we've got those ones in looking cute. Now, the next one is another type of weekly tracker. And then the idea would be that we're having kind of, we've done one that's kind of similar to this one. I'm thinking that this one is going to be more like this type of a tracker. So you could have it either based on a scale or you could have it based on, uh, oh, what's the word? Like 
having yes done or not done <laughs> yes done <laughs> yes done or no done <laughs> so that that's some some possibility uh regarding that so we can either do it like this where it's like an amount or we can do it like this where it's distinct things that you check off as being like completed not completed um if that's the case we're one two three four five six seven oh okay so these are all the weeks those technically could be the days but this is a weekly tracker so we're not doing a daily tracker we need to we need to stick with what we wrote out in the title um if that is the case then we're gonna need something to fill this space in with uh in the other version of this i had two separate columns so that you could have uh you know the full year but we are going with just six months so let's quick new one two three so this is where i would just number each of the weeks of the year uh, and that's why when i do a year at a glance i typically like to have the week numbers in there just so that, that i can reference them when i have layouts like this rather than having to go in and look up you know like the starting or ending day for each of the weeks which can be a lot more writing than just numbers if you get the numbers right we're just going to ignore the fact that i don't know how to count <laughs> or at least i can't count while i'm talking we go 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 and 26 there we go so half a year done so we're gonna assume that this is a scale amount so this one would be a kind of line graph or you could do it as a bar graph so for instance we've got seven across here so maybe it's like the number of days that you did something so it's like okay in the first week i did three lots of it and then in the next week i did all seven and then in the week after i only did six and then the week after that i only did two and so on and so forth and you just kind of you know this is all fake data so it doesn't really matter um and then maybe these weeks i was like really good and then these weeks i was not so good but anywho you kind of go through plot out all your data as the weeks roll on not ahead of time <laughs> probably otherwise it's not a tracker it's a plan uh and then go and fill up to those bars so it could be a bar graph or we could do the exact same kind of data but do it in a line graph instead um really depends on i guess the type of data you're tracking like different types of data kind of lend themselves better to different types of graphs funnily enough technically speaking a line graph is supposed to be used to show changes over time so given the fact that we do have a weekly time scale like that that works fairly well um i'm going to use my dot marker and put some dots in and we can then join those dots up there we go we'll just put in some pretend data fake data fake data there we go that looks great <laughs> It shows absolutely no trend over time because it is fake data. And I'm going to join those with a dotted line because I think it looks cute. Which of course does take a little bit more time than just drawing a ruled line. But again, it's all for the aesthetic, right? Fake data. I will say that I am a big believer that tracked, tracking data, yeah, and, and tracked data is only good for what you use it for. And a lot of the time, I'm not necessarily all that good at actually using data that I collect. Um, and I mean, the use can come either after the tracking or it can kind of come during the tracking like if you're tracking something for the accountability of having it written down to say that the thing happened like that is a use huzzah but if you're using it to gain information or insight about something you do actually have to go back in after the fact 
and have a look at it and kind of give yourself the opportunity to draw some conclusions or you know ask some questions about it hypothesize whatnots all of that kind of thing so one thing that i do need to do that is on my radar for this week is go through my time logging data and actually pull out some findings uh i was going to do it last week but after time tracking for two weeks you just kind of want to like push it to the side and leave it be for a bit <laughs> <laughs> let it sit there and stew uh, but it's kind of like with my habit tracking data and stuff like this I do try to make an effort to go back in and say like okay what, what did we learn from tracking this habit like were there any habits in particular that we found easier to do were there ones that were a little bit more challenging uh, were there particular times of the month where things did or didn't get done like what led to that also tink make sure that you're hydrating mm -mm. see so on this one we filled the blank space with decoration and a larger header and we also had two separate trackers that we were putting on here we don't need to put two on here but we do need to put something in this side panel because otherwise wasted space and i'm allergic to white space so we need something in there it could be a kind of summary like a start end kind of thing did i erase these pencil lines or not no they're just sitting here being cheeky get out of here of course we smudged something because that is the way but it's fine it's fine so we could put in what the scale is for instance so a little kind of key to say what the scale actually represents along the top here uh there's seven so one two three four five six one two three four five six seven there we go that can be like our scale or key that we're using and what each of the different numbers represents because we're just going to number it find that number scales are nice and easy to use provided you actually assign numbers to set things sometimes the numbers are quite easy like they might actually just relate to particular numbers which is nice and easy uh so it could be like each of these is a number of steps or something for each day so like 1000 2000 3000 something like that or it could be uh you know number of cups of water or like whatever you know it, it's it's really depends on what it is you're tracking because we're tracking something on a weekly basis it could be like number of days of having done something uh that kind of a thing but we'll just put one two three four five six seven now i will say that i was not super careful to actually put these dots in the boxes uh so this could be two and a half shrug je ne sais pas um but yeah that, that's kind of something so yeah observations of the track data what worked what could have been better love it alrighty so this could be a kind of like analysis panel of, of how things went down uh, you could also do it as kind of like a running total or a cumulative over different sections so it's like at the end of week five how much of a thing have we done at the end of week 10 how much of a thing have we done so on and so forth so we'll fill something in there that sounds like a good idea uh hi jess how are you i'm great how are you um I'm, it's, it's monday you know i'm as good as a monday could be no i think that my monday is actually not too bad as a side note distraction counter one vogel and i are going to the cinema tonight we're going to see aliens um they've got this like ah uh, what's it like i know what it's called movie experience type thing on where they put on the movie and then they have a restaurant guy i know what he's called a chef uh make a meal as related to the movie so there's i think it's like a five course meal type thing and it comes out at various points during the uh show and and it's all related to the stuff that's going on there which i thought was quite cool but so start end space box and there we go put the box here so if that's something that we are looking forward to for today uh, i haven't been to one of these types of things before so it should be good yeah for starting gooey alien eggs yeah i know right 
<laughs> it's okay. They're going to bring us out like a fried tarantula for a face hugger or something. I sincerely hope that is not the case. But I also feel like you wouldn't get that here in New Zealand anyways. So we're going to be fine. But I am interested to see how it goes down and whether or not I need to just buy a cheeseburger on the way home. Because <laughs> I'm fussy. Super fussy. But anywho. So this could be findings. F-I-N-D-I-N-G or T-H-O-U-G-H-T. I feel like I can't write it out one per box, so I might just write it smaller. Findings. And this can be start. And end. That could be a starting value or ending value. For instance, this could be some kind of like a weekly track of the savings, for instance. So maybe one through seven is different monetary amounts. And this is how much you added to your savings in each week. And then this could be like, you know, what was your starting savings amount? What was your ending savings amount? And then general findings like, hey, at this point of the year, I was doing a pretty good job of doing my savings. Like what was special about those weeks in particular that meant that I could add more to my savings, that kind of a thing. Uh, let's see. We need a recap of that tomorrow. Alrighty, yep. <laughs> Can do, will do. Um, yeah, I am I'm interested to see what kind of uh, food gets associated with the aliens, but oh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, they can't serve us unsafe items. Yep, we'll just have like a plate of acidic blood. <laughs> Anywho, so... Up next we have a when did I last and we're going to keep this fairly uh, fairly straightforward. It'll probably just be quite similar to this um, with the infrequent tasks down the bottom as well because sometimes we have things that don't need to be done quite so frequently. Uh, it'll kind of end up looking similar to our little monthly task list I reckon unless I change it up which I don't want to because that's kind of the way that I like it. <laughs> Lobster as a chest burster. Nice. <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed to that. That doesn't sound too bad. I kind of want to draw a line in here now that I'm thinking about it. Because we've got a dividing line over there and I just feel like this this feels incomplete. It needs a, it needs a little ruled line to make it look more put together. There we go. That looks better. I love it. He's so cute. Anyways, moving on. So... When did I last? That is another layout that we will need. And we're going to keep it. Okay. So in these videos that I do with the, with the idea videos and stuff, I do try and change up the layouts a bit so that then we don't do the same kind of stuff repeatedly. So for instance, we've got you know, year at a glance. That's fairly straightforward. Just kind of boxes that are separated for the different... Uh, months in the little future log, Calendex, which is its own kind of can of worms. Uh, this is just a running list, right? So from that, like, I don't want to have too many things that are just running lists because I've already got a simple running list here. Uh, similar idea with these. These are kind of running lists that are separated into different sections. So it is what it is. But because we've already done a monthly Alistair method here, which is honestly a little bit more cattywampus than I would have liked, but it's fine. I don't really want to do an Alistair method monthly list here as well, because that was how I did this when did I last. Like you can see the months along the top, and then you just check in to say which ones you did when type of a thing. So I think instead, I would prefer to have this be more like... <sighs> like a header possibly to say what the task is and then boxes underneath it to fill in to say when the thing was done, if that makes sense. So if we make this a, when did I last check my oil or whatever. I don't know, I don't, I don't do things. Oh, isn't that nice? I don't do things. Uh, one less is gonna make you seven. 7 is 14. 14 divided by 3 is not a nice number. Let's see. 8, 8, 8. We're gonna get out the we're gonna get out the calculator. It's just gonna be easier. Alrighty. So ue, ue calculator. 
we can open that up and then we can actually show you guys what I mean by my little calculator. So, present the grid spacing calculator. There we go. Okay, so moving little skadoodle boy up here so that I can get out my keyboard. So this is the grid spacing calculator that we talked about before. Um, so what we can do is that we can specify like how many dot spaces uh, do we have, like the actual space, not the dot, yeah? Um, so we're doing horizontal, like they both calculate exactly the same, but we're doing horizontal here and we have eight centimeters, so 16 across, yeah? Um, and then you can also specify like, do you want to round to full grid spaces? Yes, I do, because I'm not about doing any kind of math related to that. Boo hiss. So if we want it in thirds or three segments with no space in between them, then each of those segments needs to be five dot grid boxes across with one remainder. I don't want a remainder. So if I put in putting one space between them, That'll tell me, mm, okay, you're actually gonna have two dot grid spaces remainder then. That's not really what I want either. So if I put two between them, yeah? So for three segments with two dot grid spaces between them, then each of those segments needs to be four dot grid boxes across. And then I won't have any wasted space left over, all right? So I need four dot grid boxes across when I'm doing my thing. Let's go do that in here. So like we said, I need four across, yep, with two in between, and then four across, with two in between, and then four across. Ta-da! Alrighty. Love that for us. So this is my little spaces to write in when did I last do this thing? When did I last do X, Y, Z? Yes, indeed, Monica. Make sure that we are we are on, on the ball in terms of being up to date with the stream. I really just wish the stream would bring people in where we're at. Because <laughs> like, sometimes it just brings people in at the start. And I, like, I, I don't understand. YouTube, I don't understand. So I'm going to rule those out, I think, to make them neater. So we're going to have four and then a two space and then four... And then a two space, and then a four. Love it when a plan comes together. But yeah, effectively, the way that I use my calculator is just by, you know, inputting the um, amount of whatever, uh, you know, dot grid boxes either across or down or whatnot, and then just playing around with the numbers until I get to a point that I'm happy. <laughs> So we're gonna pretend that this is something that they want to do on a semi-regular basis. So we're gonna give them six boxes for this. Here we go. Yeah, I don't I don't keep a when did I last page. Vogel has a kind of version of this, not in his journal, but in his in the one note that we have for the uh house care, plant care, all of that kind of thing. Because he mainly keeps track of that stuff. Uh he was making a list the other day of um kind of ideal times or timeliness of, of things to be done. This is poorly worded, I apologize. But it's effectively, how often should I? Yeah, like, how often should I clean the gutters? How often should I clean the downpipes? Or, like, whatever. I, I'm not very savvy. Uh, and he was he was listing them out. It's like, how often should I wash the windows? And it said, like, I think it said four times a year. Because he, he went and looked this data up somewhere. And I was just standing there going, bro, you know that's not going to happen. Like, there is no way that we are going to wash the windows four times a year considering we currently do them none times a year. <laughs> Caddy Wampus, but it's fine. This is why we use the light color pen. Um, all right, ooh, good question. So a coworker said that if you don't have a daily log, you don't really have a bullet journal. Do you agree with her? No, <laughs> to put it nicely. Um, I, let's see, I'm, I'm thinking, what's the thing, is it called Theseus's ship or something? 
like where you take all of the parts out of Theseus's ship and like replace them with other stuff and whatnot. Is it still Theseus's ship? Anyways, that's an aside. But yeah, I'm not about gatekeeping bullet journals, to be completely honest. Exactly like Tina says, no, no bullet journal gatekeeping. Uh, I think that bullet journaling is a great flexible system for people. And I think that if you do not need a daily log, then you should not have to use a daily log. <laughs> um, I have kind of come around on daily logs. Like previously, I was more about a weekly view. Not so much a weekly log in the sense that Ryder Carroll talks about it, but more in the sense of like how our kind of typical planner community ha has kind of used the term weekly log um, or weekly layout. So having pre-sectioned out spaces for each of your days and writing stuff in there. And so I guess in a way you could say that it's kind of like a daily log, like you're kind of daily logging because um, you're writing things out as associated with specific days of the week and whatnot. But if you think about something like an Alistair method, yeah, uh, where you're writing stuff down, uh, but not necessarily assigning it to a day of the week at the time of writing it down, or not writing it underneath a typical daily header, is that actually a daily log? Uh, or is it just a list? I don't know. But I would still consider it bullet journaling. So I don't think that... I think that sometimes we get a little bit hung up on definitions. And I, I, I am also... Uh, guilty of that and I don't think that it necessarily adds a lot of benefit to us to get hung up in that way like I understand that the idea of labeling things can be very helpful um, you know specifying something as a daily log or a weekly log or whatnot and stuff especially when it comes to finding inspiration for things <laughs> if you know what the term is it's a lot easier to find the thing that you're looking for um, but I also don't think that it's super necessary if you find something that works for you and if it's not, in the traditional sense, a daily log, if it's working, then no harm, no foul, right? <laughs> so, no, I wouldn't agree. I think that you can still bullet journal without a daily log. I think that, um, I think that gatekeeping, whether somebody calls something a bullet journal or not, is, is it's just detrimental. Like, it doesn't really do anybody any favors. Like the person who's doing the gatekeeping gets all worked up and shitty because they're like, mm, somebody's using the terminology incorrectly and now I'm gonna be sad about it. And then the person who was, you know, sharing their journal and was excited probably about what they've been doing now also feels shitty. So I'm just like, boo hiss, boo hiss to you. <laughs> like, congratulations, you purist. Look what you've done. Now everybody's sad. <laughs> I'm going to stop being mean to this hypothetical person, but still. Anywho, I think that answers your question. It might not. It might have been a rambly mess. Okay, it was surely a rambly mess, but anywho. Let's see. I've decided that each of these is getting six, it seems. I didn't necessarily plan out the end of the page, though, as to whether that was actually going to be a good amount. Let's see. Header, box, box. And then nothing. Yeah, that's cool. We can do, we can deal with it. Header, box, box. Header, box, box. Let's see. What did you guys reckon? Alrighty. Yeah, people need to stop claiming the one true definition of some things. Yeah, it can be good for science things, but for art and creativity, not so much, eh? Like you said, I think that um. Given the fact that it is a system that is literally designed around the idea of being flexible, you can't have that level of flexibility, but then be so rigid in what counts or doesn't count towards something, if that kind of makes sense. Poorly worded, but hopefully you get what I mean. Um, it's that idea of like, you know, it's not a bullet journal unless blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I feel like I don't need to rule this part, but I'm going to anyways because I started it now, so. See, there is a very good reason as to why I usually like to rule with thicker lines, and that is because I think it just looks a lot neater when I do it. I find that when I'm ruling with a thicker line, I usually apply 
harder pressure, but a more consistent pressure. Whereas with a pen that is like this, that has quite a thin nib, I don't want to apply too hard of a pressure because I don't want to blunt the nib too much. Um, which means that I kind of get a little bit of an inconsistency in terms of how my lines look, but it's fine. We're not actually going to use this one, it's just for the ideas. We still want the ideas to be presentable though. There we go. That looks cute. So we have enough room for, in this style, uh, for four things. I guess it, it really depends on how many items you want to add to your when did I last list, right? So in this example, we only have enough space for four. You know, it's a small journal, that's fine, it makes sense. Uh, whereas if we had have done the last option with the Alistair method, we have enough space here for, let's see, 23 things, right? So if you're keeping track of quite a few things, um, and when did you last? 23, yeah? Lots and lots of stuff, which is nice. If you're not keeping track of that many, and you want something a little bit more like, I don't know, decorative-ish, then this one might be more your, more your vibe. It's cool. Alrighty. Let's see. Ooh, questions about starting. Love that. Alrighty. Yes. Start whenever. Huzzah! Alrighty. As, as people have said, yes, you can totally start a bullet journal mid-month. I started mine on the 4th of November 2016. Um, the only reason I know that is because I posted a picture to Instagram being like, oh, look what just arrived. Like it was my first LT 1917 and I was super excited. Uh, little did she know. <laughs> Anyways. But yes. So we said... Uh, changed oil. Yeah. Oil in the car replaced batteries in the alarms I think my smoke alarms are actually linked up to the house I think. <gasps> Yay! You're gonna start your bullet journal on the 10th of September 2023! Ah, oh, yes! I'm glad to hear it. That's exciting. But yeah, I, I think that there, there's a lot to be said about like the natural milestone kind of moments of starting with a new month and it can kind of feel very like special in that way. But also I find that if you start at an unconventional, unconventional time, then it's gonna be like less pressure, which is really nice. I think that was kind of what I found was one of the real benefits of starting when I did, is that if I had have started with the new year, it probably would have felt like, like first of all, very exciting. It's like new year, new me, oof, new, new journal, who dis? Um, but there's also the kind of like pressure that we then end up putting ourselves on ourselves because it's like, you know, we, we want this new start to be like a big deal, like a, you know, a, a pivotal moment. Whereas if you start a little bit before then, uh, you, you get to kind of ease yourself into a system, find out what works and what doesn't, so that then when you get to that next natural milestone moment, uh, you can kind of set a foot forward with the intentionality that you, you want for it, but also with the kind of prior understanding of how you like to do things, which is really nice. Literally that. New journal, who dis? I was thinking about it, actually, when I've been kind of, you know, working on these layouts. We so should have done a little A6 journal for November last year. That would have been an excellent idea. But alas, past Jess did not do that. It's fine. We, we all make mistakes. Anywho, so more things to, to do here. I know that there were some suggestions before, so I'm going to see if I can scroll back to find it. But it probably can't because I'm not really reading these. I'm just scrolling. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. I'm not gonna find it. I'm just, I'm just gonna make something up. Uh, last time I changed the water filter. <laughs> and Last time I tidied my office, but we're not going to put that on because that's that's too upsetting. <laughs> Let's see. Um, 
complete mind blank. I'm just gonna write ordered new candles. Because why not? Who said that they all had to be like adulting things? I own a grand total of one candle. It is it is this candle here. Gaming After Dark, it is a vanilla and cola scent. You can maybe see it. There we go. By Oasis Scents, hand poured soy candle. I got it from Monica. I now want to smell it, so I'm gonna open it up. It hasn't been burnt yet. I don't have matches in my office, which is probably for the best. But anywho, it does smell good. It's like what? Yeah, like a vanilla Coke kind of smell. Yeah, anywho. So, we've got our little winded owl. Winded owl last. Anywho, we've got it. It's here. And then in this one, we have a year in pixels. Huzzah! So, with the year in pixels, typically when people set up a year in pixels, we just scoop that to the side, uh, it looks something like... don't actually know where I've put it, so I'm just kind of scrolling through here aimlessly. It'll be in here somewhere. Weekly tracker. There it is. Okay. So typically, when people set up a year in pixels, they have a month for each of the columns and then a day number going down the side. So each row is a day, yeah? So like this is October the 1st, October the 2nd, October the 3rd, so on and so forth. And then they can color it in based on what has happened. So it could be something like a mood tracker or it could be having done or not done a habit or it could be, you know, really whatever you want. It's your tracker. Um, so I am thinking that with this, because we can't do a day per row, because the, the mini journal is too many. You see, we only get to like the 27th or something like that. I think that's right. Probably the 26th. Anywho, we wouldn't have enough vertical space. Uh, we're going to have to do it differently. And I think that the way that I was planning on doing this was the idea of every row being a fortnight or two weeks. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's Erin, right? Erin's switching from white paper to black each month, at least. I don't know if there's somebody else doing it. Um, I can I can totally understand the vibe of like wanting to change things up and, and, and doing a, a different thing each time. I don't think I could do it though. But that's also because black paper is my nemesis. <laughs> like, I, love, I love people who use a, a, like a different notebook each month. It's like... That's a whole new brand of human, I swear, because I couldn't possibly. Uh, only because I really like the, um, I guess, like, linearity of having month after month in a journal. I quite enjoy that, but anywho. So, for this year in pixels, I am going to draw in a grid. I don't want to draw in a grid. I could rule in. I'm going to rule something. Okay, we need to go and find out what December 31st of next year is in terms of day of the week. So it is the 31st on a Tuesday. Alright. So if we rule in a box with our little ruler because there's 26 rows which means if you take the 26 and you divide it in half, like put a line down the middle effectively. One, two, three and a half. So that'll be there. And then that will give us 52. Alright, that looks pretty good. And then this one just doesn't come the whole way down because we're just doing a box around the days of the year, I think. Actually, now as I've said that, oh dear. I'm just going to do it anyways because now I feel like it's not going to quite work, is it? Because it's actually not 52, it's 52.2, .2, isn't it? So there should be two extra days. Oh, I hate that so much. We totally should have put that up here. It's fine. It doesn't matter. She said trying to make it not matter in her soul, but it totally matters in my soul. So maths wise, we have 52 times seven gives us, okay, I can't do maths on the keyboard, times seven, thank you, 
is 364. We're actually having 366, so we need two extra days. So I'm going to put those two extra days up the top here because that's where I have space for them. <laughs> How annoying. Um, you got a line journal by mistake. Oh. I'm going to pretend that we're going to read this this way. Which doesn't actually make sense either, but it's fine. We're going to have to figure out how this gets set up so it doesn't suck. Because right now, we have this like weird little nubbin and it's making me sad. Am I going to have to draw out a whole grid? I really don't want to draw out a whole grid. But I feel like I might have to draw out a whole grid. This should just be 13 months of the year, honestly. <laughs> this should just be 13 months. And each of them should just be four weeks, and it would just make everything easier. But alas, here we are, without 12 months of the year. Rude. I'm gonna draw out a full grid, because otherwise it's gonna make me sad. I'm trying, Monica, I'm trying. I've been hit with the grid ruling struggle bus. I didn't want to draw out a full grid, and yet here I am, drawing out a full grid. I'll be okay. I just like it when things fit nicely. Sometimes they don't, and it makes me sad. Now you may be wondering, Jess, what the heck are you doing? This grid looks incredibly uneven, and you would be right, it does look uneven, but one of the things that I find with drawing out a full grid, like the one we're doing here, is that it's kind of tricky to get your lines straight when you don't have the dot grid available to you. And if I draw in every single vertical line first, then I'm not going to have as many visible dots to use to rule in my horizontal lines. So what I'm doing here is I'm just ruling in some of the uh, <laughs> vertical lines. And then I'm going to do some horizontal ones, uh, just to make it a little bit easier on myself. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have no grid chill. Absolutely none. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one open for now. Uh, nope, no, no, I'm not, because it has to continue onto that line. Otherwise, it'll, it'll do me a bother. There we go. The nice part is, I suppose, is that because I am using the uh, thinner pen doesn't necessarily cover up the dot grid quite as full coverage as my typical line ruling would. So I guess it's not that bad. And I say that it's not that bad, but in my soul, it feels bad. It feels bad in my soul. Yeah, typically if I was going to do a full grid like this, I would honestly just print it off on the computer and stick it in. Because it would be easier. I mean, technically I could still I could still do that. I could stop this madness and print it off the computer. I'm not going to though. I'm going to, I'm going to commit to what I've done here. And finish what I start, which is a rarity for me sometimes. I, uh, I'm slowly learning to become a project finisher. I'm very good at being a project starter. Um, not so much a project finisher though. You know, I get very excited about something and get fully stuck into it for all of about three days and then be like, oh yeah, I'll come back to this one day. I have many a TV show that I have started, gotten to, you know, like the second to last season or something like that and then just gone like, yeah, I'm done with this. <laughs> that was enough for me, yeah. I need to get myself some sticker paper so that I could stick trackers onto sticker paper. Stick trackers on sticker Print them on sticker paper and then put them into my journal. It would be a lot easier than having to uh, print and cut and double-sided tape. But that's my current method of doing things. I also would love to get a new printer though. If somebody has any, like, you know, printer recommendations of printers that just don't suck, that would be great because <laughs> printers are the worst. All right, now I'm gonna go back in and do the vertical ones only because I will actually have a horizontal dot 
on the side where my header is, which will be able to help me out with the rest of the horizontal ones, but the vertical ones I won't have any extra dots to help me out. And I like to have quite a few dots in a row so that I can line the ruler up nicely. If you just have two, it's easier to get <laughs> a little bit twisted. Uh, if you only have one, it's very easy to get twisted. Uh, ends up being like a pivot point dot and that's not what we want we want nice straight lines so as said the idea with this tracker is that you dedicate it some meaning to it so it could be having yes done or no not done a thing or it could be having done things to a different extent or it could be something else entirely for instance sometimes people use these as kind of like uh, top temperature trackers um, you know for weather patterns and stuff like that either out of interest or for some other kind of reason uh, but yes, you're an HP family. Oh, my HP printer hates me, I think. <laughs> like, I was sitting at my computer the other day, like literally yesterday, talking to someone and I could hear this like weird, like clicking, rustling noise. I'm like, what the heck is that noise? Is there an, I genuinely thought there was an animal in my office that was like rummaging around or something. It was just my printer making noises. I feel like it heard me. I heard something. <laughs> I think I'll be okay guys I'm scared <laughs> but yeah that printer is a menace uh it's the kind of thing that um it said it could take set ca cartridges right like you open up the printer and on the inside of the printer it says we'll take extra large and regular sized of this type with this code rah, rah, rah. I'm like excellent okay those are the cartridges that you take I will go and buy those cartridges and of course when I went to install them it was like no computer says no these aren't the right cartridges. Try installing the right cartridges. I'm like, it's literally the one that you've said. Like, it, it is the exact same code. I checked on the back of the packet, and it says that on the on the cartridge packet that I can use it with this printer, and it says in the printer that I can use it with this printer, but it's like, no, can't possibly. Awful. <laughs> Had a can and it wouldn't stay connected to the Wi-Fi. Rude. <laughs> See, all of it's just rude. Yeah, if they make a printer that just works, that'd be nice. So this is our year in pixels now. You can see that we have a pixel or a box for each day of the year. Um, typically, if it's not in a format like the one that we had before, where you've got kind of the labels for each of the months and each of the days, I will go and put something in here to show what day of the year it actually is. Um, Typically I wouldn't number the whole thing because that's quite a lot. Uh, it would be a bit, bit too much for me. Uh, but I would just put in the first initial for each month. Um, so for instance, on the 1st of January I'll put a J and then I'll count through. The 1st of February I'll put an F. The 1st of March I'll put an M, so on and so forth. Uh, what size is our little journal? This guy here across is 8 centimeters in terms of the dot grid size. So just thinking about this. And then in terms of the vertical, we have 13 centimeters of dot grid. Um, in terms of actual journal size, like the actual notebook itself, we're thinking more like 9.3 centimeters across and roughly 14.2 centimeters across. <laughs> Too damn small size. <laughs> Indeed, mini. Also, tink. Yeah. Mm. I'm sorry that your Epson is not friendly. Uh, see, that's the thing. They just don't make printers that just work, like consistently work. It would be quite nice. Anywho. So the year in pixels is here. It's looking cute. I feel like I should go and label. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so this would be January 1st. January 14, 16, 16 plus 14 is 30, 31 February, I think. So that'll be 14, 28, 29, March, March, 14, 28, 29, 30, 31, April. 14, 28, 29, 30, May. And 
if you were doing this, you would not use an ink joy uh, because if you go and try and color over the ink joy, it's literally just going to end up making it um, a kind of muddy, muddy color mess, which is not really what we want. But for the sake of this, where I'm not actually coloring it in, we can do this. It's all good. Uh, May is 31, so that's 14, 28, 29, 30, 31. June is 30, so 14, 28, 29, 30. July is 31, so 14, 28, 29, 30, 31. August. <laughs> August is 31, so 14, 28, 29, 30, 31. September. September is 30, so 14, 28, 29, 30. October. October 14, 18, wait, no, 14, 28, 29, 30, 31, November, November 14, 28, 29, 30, December, and just to check, December 14, 28, 29, 30, 31, oh, perfection, wizardry, alrighty, it's not that bad, it's, it's kind of cute, now as it's finished, never again. Anywho, <laughs> so that is the year in pixels. And then I kind of don't have any more that I've sketched in, but I still want to set up some more because th this does not a good video make. There's only this many layouts. Ridiculous. We can't have just, how many are there? One, two, three, four and a half, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No. We can't have a we can't have a video with only eleven ideas. It's ridiculous. So we're gonna need to set something else up. We're going to take our inspiration from this journal here. So we did our one in out last. We did a weekly tracker of some description. A Kanban board for this size notebook. I don't think I would tend towards just because there's not really a lot of space. I suppose, like you could, maybe. Maybe. We'll leave it as a maybe. Uh, grid spacing guide we totally need. So we can set that up now. So we'll do, oh yeah, meal planning is totally going in here because I think it would be nice to have one. Uh, grid spacing guide we'll do now and then we'll get into monthly tracker-esque things. So if we are doing a grid spacing guide, we're going to bring back our little baby box. Let's go see. Let's go see. We need our calculator. So like we said, we do have 16 across. That's nice and easy. And then vertically, we have 26. So we can put 26 in. Uh, we do want there to be uh, rounding to full grid spaces. So this is what we've got. Um, we're going to get rid of that. We don't need a gap. And we'll get rid of that. Cool. So in accordance with this, if we want to split it into halves, we're going to have two sizes of 13 dot grid boxes Across, across, down, because this is vertical. Uh, so that makes sense. If we want to do thirds, we're going to do eight with a remainder of two. So we're going to put a one in here. That's cool. So it's again me just playing around with like, what kind of spacing do I want in terms of spaces between segments versus uh, not having that so that I can get this remainder down as little as possible effectively is kind of what I'm doing. And similar idea with this, like we said, if we want it in thirds, we're going to put two dot grid spaces between them so that we can have no remainder of boxes. This blech, remainders make me sad. Unless you're trying to put a header in, like it makes sense to have a remainder if you want to have a header on the page, but I don't want a header on the page right now. So in terms of halves, we wanted put a zero in there and it's eight, that's cute. So 13 down, what's 13 halved? Can't do that kind of math in my head. Six and a half? Six and a half. There we go. There we go. Put that there. Put that here. here. One, two, three, four. I don't know if you can hear my stomach rumbling, but it's like, feed me. And I'm like, no, calm yourself. It's not food time yet. You already had some pretzels. Stop whining. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Put that on the line. We might need to make those circles a little bit bigger so that then the line actually goes into them a little nicer. I don't know, that looks pretty cute. So this is our halfway. 
Typically when I do a grid spacing guide like this, I do like to have it so that each of the lines is slightly different in some way, either a different color or a different style or something like that, just so that then you can kind of differentiate between them a little easier. Now, thirds going vertically were, um, let's see, words eight, yeah, eight with one. So four centimeters, four then break, four then break. Yeah, that sounds about right. So we'll put that here. Four, break, four, break. Cool. Five See, when I set up a uh, grid spacing guide, I typically don't like to do it in a page, like a page in the notebook, because then you have to flip back and forth anytime you want to set it up or like, you know, use it or whatnot. I prefer having a ruler. Uh, so for instance, in my current journal, I turned the front page into a little pocket so that I could have my little ruler. And that also means that I just do little kind of uh, nub and divider type things. So you cannot see that, I apologize. Better, better, okay? So for instance, to do quarters, I have um, you know this space from the second to the ninth, and then a little break, and then the next quarter here, so on and so forth. It's a little messy in the middle because halves and quarters kind of overlap each other, but you can kind of hopefully see what I mean by that. Like if I want to do thirds, it's one to 11, and then I have a little break, and then it's 14, down to 24, and then a little break, and then 27, down to the end. So on and so forth. Anywho. Good morning, Denise. Such a pleasure to have you here. Put that safely back into my little pocket so that I don't lose it. So this is thirds. We'll do little, little dots on the side here. So if you're doing thirds on the page vertically, we've got eight spaces, gap, eight spaces, gap, eight spaces. Nice. And then if we're doing thirds vertically, if we don't want there to be any wasted space, I don't know. For, for this one, it wasn't so bad because you're just writing a date in these. If you want there to be a little bit more space, though, hmm, let's see. Let's, let's see if I can play around with my numbers a little bit. Can I make that a one? Yeah, okay. We'll just put it here. Put it on the side. But then it's still four. That seems silly. Nah, we're not doing that. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Don't mind me just, like, talking to myself regarding the grid spacing uh, and getting it lined up nicely. I think that for a journal of this size, I probably wouldn't do a lot of dividing the page typically anyways, outside of halves. Like halves makes sense for having you know two columns of things or like a top section and a bottom section of something. And even thirds vertically kind of makes sense because that's what we used on the uh, future log that we set up at the start, like those are thirds kind of a thing, um, roughly. But uh, yeah, this, these thirds columns are quite skinny, so I probably wouldn't use them super often. But it's all good. Cute. Quarters. Quarters, that's all good. So we can do quarters the like in horizontal strips, that will make sense, but doing them vertically or like strip wise, I don't know how to explain it. Like that one won't be so good. <laughs> like um there we go. Thirteen was six and a half. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't like the remainder on that. Maybe we'll leave it. That looks kind of cute. Anywho, so we've got halves 
L V S and thirds. We'll just label it so that we can see what they are. There we go. That's cute. We've got our little grid spacing guide in there. Looking pretty nifty. Alrighty, flipping over. What do we need next? Uh, we need to have a meal plan at some point. I think we will put in some kind of a monthly tracker to say like amounts of something because I like the idea of it. Um, and we could also make that so that it is for the full year. Just given the fact that we've got a full year in pixels, we might as well have some full year layouts in here too because it's all about ideas. So it's all good. So this guy here is going to be a centimeter per month. Yeah because it's 13 up. Yep, that makes sense. So December, November, October, September, August, July, June, January, February, March, April, May. <laughs> We can do the end of the year because it says Jason D. It's nice and easy, but the the, the top half, I'm like, uh, what? Uh huh. March, February, January. So this one is kind of more like a, a monthly tracker of some description. I mean, we did technically say monthly. There's a monthly tasks. So yeah, we'll call this a monthly tracker. Usually when I make these idea videos, I do try to be a little bit more ordered in terms of grouping things together that are kind of related to each other. Uh, this time around, not so much. <laughs> Monthly tracker. Okay. E. There we go. And we're going to draw it out as a kind of little grid type thing. We'll do, do, we'll, we'll do a darker line around the outside and maybe some light grey ones horizontally in the middle. Could be. There we go. We've actually kind of given ourselves enough space to go the whole way across, so I'm going to go the whole way across. So this could be for, I don't know, any kind of cumulative statistic you're looking at. So this could be for like your savings, if you're doing savings, or it could be for number of books read, or it could be for number of pages read, if you're kind of keeping on that reading theme, or number of projects completed, or literally anything that you can track in a numerical way effectively is going to lend itself quite nicely to this. Um, so a count, a volume, an amount, anything like that. Is this notebook used for R&D? Uh, yeah, so it is literally just an ideas book, effectively. Um, I was playing around with the idea of actually possibly using it, but then that was going to limit me in terms of the number of ideas I could actually show. So I'm trying to trying to keep in mind that this is not actually for me. It is just uh, just for ideas. I'm thinking that... Uh, part of me wants to rule the lines across because I think it would look nicer. All right, we're just going to go and draw in some and then line it up so that then the centimeter mark is actually where the months are so that I can kind of see what I'm doing. Make it a little easier. One there, and that one here. And we'll put one here. That looks fine. And we can put one that's fairly low for some reason. Like, ooh, that month didn't go so well. And then one in the middle of here. <laughs> Just like me making up fake data effectively to showcase how you would use a layout like this. That is what I am doing right now. Uh, we'll make this one quite high. There we go. One, two, three. I'm trying to make sure that I don't accidentally put a double up because that would be mighty unfortunate uh, and we need one for August and August can be down here somewhere August, August. that looks good 
We need something for December though. So December can go here. And we also need one for November. I think November will be kind of medium to high. Medium to high sounds good. There we go. Okay, so here's our fake data for these months. So then we can have it like that. Effectively just a little bar graph to show the completion of something, like how much of something has happened. And in our other example, I would have colored this in, but I might color in every second bar, um, just so that there is some kind of, I don't know, slight visual appeal to it, but we are trying to keep things fairly minimal. Fairly minimal. The nice part about this is that you could technically track two things at once as well. Uh, so you could kind of see trends over time in terms of like, okay, is doing more of one thing making the other thing get do done more as well? Or is it, you know, kind of reverse? So if I do more of one thing, am I doing less of another thing? Uh, didn't put one in for here, but we'll just put you up to there. It's all good. Um, I'm trying to think of something that would have like a kind of reverse relationship like that. Maybe it could be, I don't know, um, amount of time spent reading versus watching something yeah uh, so is it that the months that i am more motivated to read i am watching less in terms of like tv or movies or something or does my media consumption kind of like both tend in an upwards direction for any given month that would be a kind of interesting statistic to look at uh could be the idea of like related health habits i suppose so it could be something like you know, the months where I'm doing more exercise, am I also drinking more water to match that? Or something like that. Here we go. Cute. Now I need to do some colouring in. And I think to do the colouring in, I'm just going to be lazy. And I'm going to do some washi taped edges so that then I can make them kind of easy. Easy mode in terms of just scribble colour over the top of them. So we're using some washi tape to just kind of mask the page so that I don't color outside the lines effectively. Uh, and then I can color in each, every second one. <laughs> yeah, Jason, Rulo, literally that, eh? <laughs> what do I call you as in what do you call me? My name's Jess. It's a pleasure to meet you if you're actually talking to me with regards to that question. Um, if you're not, then I'll just, I'll just be over here, like, minding my own business, pretending I don't exist. Um, We'll put these ones over here. That looks kind of cute. And I, I kind of wanted it to be that every second one was colored. So I don't actually need to washi tape the whole thing. Question mark. I'm going to see if I can find a smaller tape, actually. <laughs> Says as if, like, she can't. Of course I can find a smaller tape. I'm a wizard. And I have a lot of spare tapes. I think this one might almost even be a centimeter across so that might actually be quite useful for this is it oh it's just so lightly shy of it so rude that's okay it's fine tell me my feelings that you hurt tape so that one there and then this one here and i know that people get a little bit uh sad about the idea of me wasting the tape i don't like to think of it as wasting i like to think of it as using uh, if that makes you feel any better, I don't know, but it makes me feel better. It's the kind of thing that, like, I could use this tape in my journal, but it's not really my aesthetic. Uh, so I would rather use it to speed up my colouring in process or make my colouring in just look a little bit nicer. Um, if that kind of makes sense. And yes, this could go to somebody else, but... That would require me finding someone else who wants it that lives close enough to me to make it a viable thing, you know? <laughs> so apologies if the use of tape makes you sad. But, um... <laughs> no, because you want to call me what you call me at school? I mean, you can call me Miss Siachi if you want, but like... But like, am I Miss Siachi anymore? <laughs> Does it count? There we go. Ugh, there we go. Rip the tape off, rip the tape off. That looks cute. I'm wondering if I don't colour in 
the other ones that I haven't taped over in a different color just so that they stand out a little bit more from the background because I feel like otherwise they're going to look a little bit strange. So in that respect, maybe I'll color this one in with a slightly darker gray. N55 might be too dark though. So I'm going to go find a lighter, a darker light gray. There we go. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you show Kira chewing up the boxes, it's like, you know, at least it's getting used kind of thing. Like the Archer and all the boxes that I have that um, I don't, well, I guess I don't have anymore. <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, they went to Rachel's work. And Rachel, Rachel has um, uh, used them with her kids and they like painted them and stuff. Um, for reference, Rachel is an early childhood teacher. So her kids' paintings are uh, certainly works of art. Um, <laughs> but that, you know, at least the boxes are actually getting used. Otherwise they were literally just sitting in my cupboard and collecting dust kind of a thing. So, you know, I'm not like putting them out to display them or anything like that. Um, Cause I am certainly the type of person who is inclined to just like hoard stuff, I suppose, in terms of you know, whether it be stationary supplies or uh, nice boxes in particular are a weakness. Yeah, it is a, it is a weak area for me. Um, so at least in using them, in this way, for instance, with the washi tape. Like, at least it's getting used, you know? That's totally fine with me. So, we can take the tape off, though. Whee! It just means that my colouring process, I get a little bit more consistent in terms of the uh, colour that I've put down. You know, I uh, don't have the um, doubled over areas as much. For instance, like we did on our little, wherever it was, this guy here. So every time that the pen went over itself, it got a little bit darker. Same thing happens with your coloring in. But if I do this masking trick, it means that I can color it in quicker and you don't get the same darkening wherever you've gone over twice with the pen, if that kind of makes sense. And I just think it looks a little bit nicer. Which if you're going for a more minimal aesthetic, minimal aesthetic, this type of thing just looks a little bit better in my personal opinion. If you're doing something a little bit more sketchy, then it, it really doesn't, doesn't matter so much. For instance, if we just throw half of our supplies around the place, and just click on something it seems. In my current month that we're doing with our little kind of like crime solving theme, having overlapped areas of color, for instance, on this little board here, like it, it doesn't matter so much because it is a more doodly sketchy type thing. Whereas this one, where we're trying to be a little bit more minimal, you know, it just looks a little bit nicer. I mean, if you're the kind of person who wants to go minimal with your journal, not so much from a kind of aesthetic point of view, but more for just like an ease of use point of view, you probably don't care so much um, as to whether or not this is super, super neat. I feel like I should washi tape over it, but I'm not going to. Is this the wrong pen? I feel like this is the wrong pen. You're N95 though. The other guy, is really not that different, is it? Oh well. Really? Can you see a difference there? Did I pick up the wrong pen? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I used N95. I'm gonna swatch this on something, because now I am skeptical. Tell me a piece of scrap paper. So that's N75. And that's N95. They are like the same color of pen, I swear. <laughs> now I feel like I'm going to have to washi tape over it and go with an even darker color again. And that makes me sad because we just did all of that taping and I went with the darker color first so that I wouldn't have the issue. But it's fine. Doesn't even matter. It's not fine. I'm devastated. No. <laughs> I could go over it twice to darken it. What I'm actually going to do though is use the N55. And I'm just gonna go over these places. There we go. We'll try and do this in a way that is, like, technically, technically speaking, you can um, use the tape twice, 
I just tend not to because it beads up the uh, coloured ink on it and then when I try and lay the tape down it uh, ends up smudging. So I usually just get rid of it. Yeah, it looks like a little darker but not different enough to give me what I wanted from that. Otherwise I wouldn't have bothered to tape every second row kind of a thing. So we are going to go in and we're going to do N55 instead because you can actually see the difference between them. I need some variation here. See, in my uh, traveler's notebook version of this, I did orange and yellow lines. So different color meant that you could actually see, see a distinct difference between them. Can you hear that kind of squeaking? <laughs> I could washi tape it instead of colouring it in, but I'm not going to because I haven't used washi anywhere else. It is a valid idea though, you could totally do that. Um, and there we go. Keep that one nice and small. Nice and small. I do wish that this tape was just a millimetre thicker because then I wouldn't have to lay down doubles of it everywhere. I thought it was a centimetre across, but maybe I am lying to myself. Strong possibility of that. But yeah, normally speaking, when I do this type of uh, thing where I'm trying to do every second um, every second row a different colour, I would usually lay down the darker colour first because then you can just go over the top with the lighter one and it doesn't really matter. Uh, but that is not the case this time around because my darker one was not dark enough. Alas, here we are. So, which ones have I missed? I've missed the top two to make it... There we go. We'll just rip you off there. That looks good. Struggles. Struggles. Oof, that's going to be close. We need to be careful with that one. But that's okay. <laughs> just be honest with Jess. I know. <laughs> I try to be honest with myself. Okay, that looks good. And then this one. Squick, 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 squick. And this one. Squick, squick, squick. There we go. Looks good. Because I think it'll just look a little bit nicer having the, uh, having that kind of difference in the shading between the two. Now this one's going to look a little bit darker probably because it already had pen laid down on it. But I think that it won't be that noticeable. Excellent. All right, this is looking cute remove all of our other tape carefully if you are doing this trick just by the way because like effectively what we're using is like painter's masking tape yeah it's just that the painter's masking tape is washy and it's patterned and whatever um make sure that you're using a tape that has a low stickiness <laughs> or is not so sticky because when you pull it up off the page you don't want to rip the page uh that's not really the business like i think i might be doing slightly just here totally am need to be careful there we go. The reason that I'm doing this one first is so that I can pull up the side of these green tapes without having to fiddle around with them too much. Uh, it is working to a varied extent, but it is technically working. There we go. So I'll hold it up to the camera so you can hopefully see what I meant by that uh, small amount of pulling up of the page that we got from before, but it's not so bad. I think that this has turned out quite nice looking. I mean, you know, with having done this right now uh, uh, together on camera, this is not how you would actually set this one up because you probably aren't going to fill in all of your tracked data all at once. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't normally do it that way. Uh, typically, you would probably fill it in as the months end or whatever else. So you wouldn't have to do all of these at the same time. And like Denise says, yes, you can totally use post-it notes, which is nice. What I will say is that if you are going to use post-it notes, try not to use too many like repeatedly. For instance, let's just, we'll take this. Like if I use this one to mask off, you know, a part of the page, color it in rah rah, and then pull it up and put it somewhere else. If you use it too many times, because this is paper, your pen can sink through, yeah? And then you can end up just, you know, smudging on your page, anywho. So, 
you can probably see it there next to the February, but we'll hold it up so you can see. You can see that this corner of the page has pulled off slightly, so that, that tape was a little aggressive, has, has done a small amount of paper murder, but it's okay. It's only a little bit. We'll be fine. Do I pull it off? Yeah, I'll just pull it off. Ta-da! No harm, no foul. All good. Yeah. So you can set up a cute little monthly tracker and the nice part is is that you totally have enough space for each month of the year and then you can either put in like monthly tracker or you could put in a little kind of um key scale bar kind of thing at the top here so it's like one two three four to say how many each of these things actually represents or you could just write it in the bar so for instance this one's one two three four five six so maybe this was like I was gonna say six books read but then that means that this is like 13 books read or something crazy. <laughs> I'm not just sure, I don't think it's actually 13, it might be 11 or something, but. No, actually, probably, probably is 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 books read. Yeah, not me, obviously, but um, somebody, maybe. Maybe that many books. Anywho. Dink. <laughs> My colour and noise is the same noise that your cat makes when it scratches a post. Oof. <laughs> Hopefully not an unpleasant one. Um, what have we done so far? Alrighty. So yeah, chapters read. That sounds like way safer. Like that is not that is not as daunting if it's chapters. Alright, so so far we have made a year at a glance. We've made a little mini future log or maybe a memory keeper. We've made our calendex, or it could be a type of um, year-long tracker of some description. I say year-long, this is only six months, but you get the gist. We have our little timetable for a week going from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have a little home versus work kind of weekly tasks list, uh, so things to do around the house or at work. We have a monthly tasks list, so a column for each of the months and then the tasks that you write down. We've got our weekly tasks, so this is for the first half of the year, and you just tick off when you've done each of those. A little weekly tracker with a little kind of side panel for any findings you get from tracking it, what your start date and end date was, or maybe starting and ending statistics, yep. Uh, and then we have a when did I last page for six occurrences of having last done each of those things. We have our year in pixels, and we have our little grid spacing guide, and now we've just set up our monthly tracker. Next up, we are going to set up another type of monthly tracker, maybe. Let's see. We'll think about it. Because we had a couple of different versions of monthly trackers, and we also had monthly lists. So I feel like we should have at least two monthly trackers. So we're going to have another one. <laughs> monthly... Tracker. Again, with the idea of like trying to show different versions of the same kind of layout, I suppose. It's kind of like how you can set up a uh, future log in a variety of different ways, right? So the future log that we did here was very much just the idea of taking each page, splitting it into three sections, and then you can list out the stuff that's happening in each of those months. Whereas technically a calendex is also a future log, it's just a different type of future log. Um, you could also have done it so that we split each of the pages into two halves. Kind of, you know, use our little grid guide. You know, half one for some months and then another half for another month. Or if you don't have as much going on, split it into four, that kind of stuff. Um, I find that when you get really familiar with how to split your page up into different size segments, that's where you can start getting quite creative with your layouts and get them to fit the type of thing that you need them to do, yeah? Uh, so like we said, lots of different ways to set up a future log. And if you're more familiar with the divisions that you can do with your page, you're more able to creatively think about setting up a different style of future log. Hopefully that makes sense. Anywho, so, so we're gonna do another monthly tracker here. Like I said, we had a couple of different monthly trackers that we set up in the Traveler's version. So the one we just did was this kind of one where you have a scale and then fill in with a bar. And then after that, we had a couple of other ones. So this is kind of more grid based uh, months and then having yes done or not done the thing. And this one is more like sectioned and I think we're gonna go with a sectioned version. 
only because this is similar to the monthly tasks that we did over here. Yes, yes. We are going to get to the monthly setup for sure because um, I've got a couple of different ideas for how you can do the monthly setup in the, in the mini journal. It's so cute. I love it. It's like literally the thigh of my hand. It's beautiful. Anyways, moving on, getting our monthly tracker done. So like I said, this one is going to be more akin to having headers for each of the months and then a little kind of dot range of tasks that you're doing. Uh, so that you can kind of color and say that you did or didn't do them type of a thing. So in that case, I feel like I need to sketch this out. This is where the pencil comes in. So if I do one month here, two, three, four, five, six. That looks pretty good. And then we'll do two columns worth. So. Do I want a capital? Yes. Thinking about it. I feel like I need to have a key down the bottom. So if that's the case, then I wouldn't want the key to butt right up against you though. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> So what I'm kind of thinking about here, if, if I bring it back so you can kind of see what I'm what I'm what I'm nutting through. So in this one we had two rows for the header. So I was thinking we could do something similar to that. And then we had two rows for the habit, but I think rather than taking up two rows, I would just put it up one kind of a thing. Uh, so that then it's only three rows taken up for each of these months, and that's what I've kind of mapped out here. But then we also have a space down the bottom which specifies what the different tasks are. And I think that it would be good to have a key of some description to say what those tasks actually are. So I'm thinking maybe if we made this two. Okay, so that's one and break, two and break, three and break, four and break, five and break, six and key that that looks better okay we're gonna do that instead and we can just put it in nice and simply we'll just do like jan jan does anybody know that ad like it's like not happy jan because jan didn't put the ad in the white pages i feel like only a very specific subset of people watching might understand what i'm talking about here January, February, thing blank, March. T -t April, May. June, July. August, September. And then November. There we go. Alrighty. Yeah, a meal log or plan is totally going to come in here. We're totally going to do that. Um, how many pages? We have 112 pages in this notebook. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, So we're going to pretend that there are 7 habits that this person is tracking which I should not have put these dots in. I did that on accident, but here we are. Because in theory, what I would do is that I'd actually draw out the icons to represent each of the different habits, and then I put a dot over the top to say whether it did or didn't get done. But hey, <laughs> you grew up with Jan, good. <laughs> Yeah, not happy Jan. My mum still says it on occasions. And then I find myself saying it every so often too. Not happy Jan. All right. We're going to rule some lines in because I think it'll just look a little bit more put together. A little bit more um, completed professionals. Something, something. Uh, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cute. I can already see that my pen has blunted from the ruling we're doing. Oh no, my child. I mean, like, we buy these things to use them. 
so it's okay that it's not in its most pristine state anymore. It just means that I actually used the pen. <laughs> like, that's okay. I do have uh, a bit of trouble with using things that after having used them, even if for a little bit or for a while, they uh, kind of show their usedness, I guess. Kind of like, like with paints, you know, if you're using paints, um, you know, in a paint palette, eventually you start to kind of eat away at one over the others or something like that. My gold watercolors are like that. I've got one gold in particular that is my favorite go-to gold, and that one has a distinct carved out hole in it compared to the other ones in the palette. It's like, oh, sorry friend. I just love you so much. You're so beautiful. I just love you so much. <laughs> there we go. See, I'm glad that some of you guys got the, the Jan reference because, yeah, it is maybe a little bit more niche. Uh, January, February, March, April, May, June. July, August, September, October, November, December. Gorge. Excellent. And again, we're going to put those dots in even though I wasn't supposed to. So the idea here is that we have seven things that we're tracking to do each month. Uh, so they could be like monthly goal actions or they could be things around the house or they could really be whatever like it could be like pay your electricity bill or it could be uh you know content plan your month if you're someone like me who posts the content posts the content uh really whatever it is uh, so then you would just be able to note down that you have or haven't done said thing so for instance, my chair is real squeaky. You can hear it, right? I don't know if you can hear it. I don't mean for you to be able to hear it. It, it needs some it needs some oiling, my poor chair. So we're going to put a little key down the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Of course. Of course it won't fit in. So we're going to do... Uh, four and three. One two, three, four. Yeah, I'm going to put you here for some reason. And then a black dot, which we did not list in as owl. Yeah, <laughs> it's squeaky. There we go. So a black dot is like not done. Yeah. Not done. That can be our little key, which I'm also going to rule in with a little with a little header. So, for this notebook, we've obviously been keeping the headers quite minimal. We've just been putting in like you know little uh, letter per dark red box, nice and simple. This just goes to show that with this extra little space, you could technically have a more decorative header. Uh, that takes up a little bit more space if you wanted to. Wee Boink. Cute. Love it. Alright. So, each of these are going to be a little symbol of some description, which means we're going to need to draw some symbols in. We are going to have a smiley face, because it is easy to draw. A lightning bolt, because it is easy to draw. A house, because it is easy to draw. A heart. Because it is easy to draw. <laughs> um, we are going to have a dollar sign. Because it is easy to draw. A question mark. And a... Mm, triangle. Because again, like... They are fairly small symbols. You don't want them to be, like, super... <laughs> super decorative detailed or anything. Because you're going to be drawing them on each of these. And we want to make the journal easy to fill in. It's going to be way easier to fill in if... It's less... Difficult to fill in. Da -da. Anyways, so we're just going to go and draw each of these out. So the idea would be that you would have each of the icons already drawn in for the year. And then you just go and put the little grey or black dot over the top to say, yes, I did do the thing or no, I did not do the thing. Uh, lightning bolt. 
So that could be like pay the power bill or something like that. And then a little house could be doing a like home admin day or something like that. Uh, or it could be like a loan repayment or something if you only have one loan repayment per month or paying rent or something if you only pay rent once per month. I don't know, this is just an example. A uh, little heart could be for like an intentional date night or something. Really is completely up to you and you can use whatever symbols you like. I mean, technically they don't even have to be symbols. You could do letters as well, which is quite easy. Uh, makes it makes it a little bit more user friendly. Dollar sign, question mark, triangle. Dollar sign, question mark, triangle. I just like using little symbols because I think that they look cute and often I can tie meaning to a symbol more than I can to a letter. Uh, so for instance, if I have a little pencil on my tracker, I know that that's about writing something down, probably about recording something in my daily log. But if I just put a D, I'll be like, is that like dinner or <laughs> is it like D for like doing the dishes or you know, there's a, there's a range of different things it could be. Um, whereas the icon gives me a little bit more of a visual hint as to what that habit is about. Uh, to the extent where oftentimes, previously I haven't used a key in my habit trackers because I know what my symbols actually mean. The problem is when you come back to it after the fact and you're trying to show people idea videos and stuff like that, and you're like, so here's some symbols, no flipping clue what I was on about, but they exist. <laughs> Here we go. So we'll have our little house, which is cute. And then a little heart, which is nice and simple. You can hear Bogle moving around. I wonder what he's up to. He at least just closed his door. I assume you could possibly hear that. Big shrug. But uh, my door has this issue where I don't think the, uh, I don't know what the part's called. You know when you open the door handle and there's that little kind of thing that puts into the side of the door frame so that then it actually is like kind of set. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize my focus was turned off. You know, it's probably been coming in and out and not even been noticed by me at least. Um, the hole in the frame of the door that the part fades into is I think too big. So then my door like rattles. It's very rude. Let's see. Do you think it'll have enough pages for a five year journal? Uh, it could. I mean, we'd have to do some do some maths. Um, I don't think that you would be able to fit one day per page. I mean, I, I don't think you would not be able to fit one day per page because uh, it is only 112 pages. But What's 112? 112 times 2 is not enough, is it? Because that is 112 times 2 is 240, 224. And if you times by 3, you only have 336, which isn't. Oh, yeah, the, sub one, yeah, the one in the sub box is totally going to be big enough for that because that's 192, like you said. So 192 times two for each page is totally big enough for that, yeah. So my five-year journal only has 160 pages. No, it totally has 192. And that's why I did two per. Okay, yep, 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 yep. So my five-year journal, this guy here, my cheeky boy, uh, does have 192 pages, just like the one in the sub box, um, but mine is obviously a little bit bigger. So I have it that I have three lines per day plus a break between each of them for each of these. This one's going to butt up against the line and it's going to bother the ever-loving heck out of me, but hopefully I won't care so much because it'll be the last year that I'm using this. Um, but yeah, a whole bunch of stuff in there. Anywho, that is another distraction. <laughs> With my tiny journal. Look at how cute you are, my friend. You're so small. Oh, I love it. All right. So this one is looking cute. Yeah, you're talking about the subbox lined one, which has a ton of pages. All righty. Let's see. Yeah, the door jam. Is that what it's called? The door jam? Anywho, moving along. Oh, 
crease in my page in the way that Monica loves me to crease the page in the sense that she absolutely hates it. Um, yeah, I think you could totally use the, uh, use that one for a, <laughs> is it description count of five? Am I on five? How did I get to five? Drink break, tink. Need to, need to emotionally process this slander. Oh my gosh. Distraction, distraction count of five, ridiculous. The chair is bothering me, like with its squeakiness. Anywho. So we have the monthly trackers. They're looking pretty cute. I'm not going to put in this one here, just because it is very similar to the one we had before with the uh, monthly tasks in the Alistair method, wherever he was, this guy here. Um, and then after that, we're on to monthly lists, which isn't bad. I guess we could put something like that in, but... Yeah, we could put a monthly list in. Why not? We'll do it. Why not? <laughs> You're so rough. I am a little bit aggressive. <laughs> because you are yo, indeed. <laughs> yes, I am me. Does anybody remember the Saddle Club? <laughs> I love the Saddle Club. <laughs> so this is going to just be another monthly tasks type thing. You are you, I am me, we'll be free, hello world, you and me. Yeah, I, I, I'll oil it on a uh, protective surface or outside. Yeah, good idea. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking something like a small commonplace notebook would be quite cute. We'll do some kind of a commonplacing type uh, layout idea in this one too, but we're, we're getting through more of the kind of... Um, start of journal setups first and then I'll get into the kind of daily, monthly, that kind of thing. I do try to make them like roughly ordered. Roughly. Usually it would be a little bit more accurately ordered than I have done this time. For instance, like we got into a weekly tracker and then went back to a year in pixels and now we're in monthly trackers again. I feel a little bad about that, but not bad enough to do anything, so hey. So, uh, monthly tasks. I want to have maybe some little like three per, I think that that's reasonable. Yeah, three per sounds pretty reasonable. So in that case, then you are going to be one, two, three, or I could do four per. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five, Six, five, six. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna do five. That seems reasonable for some reason. Um, I feel like I want to highlight every second line now. Okay. We're gonna highlight every second line. <laughs> there we go. Only because it's been it's been a while since we've done that, so it'd be worth worth having it on this one. So the idea on this list is that it's less about tasks that you're repeating every month and more about tasks that you're assigning to particular months. So maybe it's like um, different kind of focus areas in your house or something, or it could be some kind of annual challenge where you focus on different things for each month or something like that, uh, something along those lines. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. So, for instance, I think I think it was Erin who was doing a challenge of uh, different types of kind of like exercise styles or something like that for each of the months of the year. So it could be that you're writing down things to do associated with that for each of the months or something similar. One... One, two. So this is going to just be a little, little grid for each of those. And then 
a lot of these layouts that have either six months or 12 months on them, you can either, uh, you know, condense it to make it so that you have more or less space, depending on which way you consider condensing to be, or you can expand it so that it goes over two spreads or something if you want to have more space for each of the different sections. For instance, on this one here, we have our six rows, but what we're going to do is we're going to divide the rows in half so that then you have 12 segments. Yeah. So you can either have this so that it's for six months and then do the same thing on this page here so that then it's like more, or you can have it divided in half like we're going to do here. Here. So that then we have 12 months on this one page kind of a thing. Really depends on, you know, what it is you're trying to record, size of your handwriting, yada yada yada, lots of factors. Probably didn't need to rule the middle, but I did, so that's what we've got. Clunk, clunk, clunk. So we're gonna do January 1, and then February 2, and March. Three, April, <laughs> four, May, month, June, six, July, seven, August, eight, uh, September. November, nine, eleven, ten, December. Glitch. One, two. I realize that I did the top one with a little, you know, serif esque type thing. Alrighty, that looks cute. So then you could record what your tasks were in each of those months. I am going to do black checkboxes for each of those. I would put the dot down, but I don't want to because the greys kind of clash ever so slightly. I'm trying to kind of avoid using them together in a way. Do wish that they had a better match okay so one thing that i would like to do at some point not today future me problem very much is go through each of my different brands of pens and markers and find color matches across them so find the color match in the tombos for the zig clean color dot markers and find the color match between the mild liners and the tombos and find the color match between the Stetler Tri Plus fine liners and the mild liners and the tombos and the Zigling color dot markers. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. So that would be a project that I would like to do at some stage. That project is not for now, but it is something I would like to do. It also could be the kind of thing that it's not necessarily the exact color match, but it could be ones that work well together uh, in terms of hue kind of a thing rather than like complementary color palettes or anything like that. So it's like if I'm looking for a pale blue Tombow, but then want a bright blue Stetler to go with it, like which combination works the best, I guess. And there we go. That looks cute. <laughs> Tink! Alrighty. So. That looks pretty cute. I like that. Uh, now, I think that's okay for monthly tasks. I think what I would like to do, I need something here before I get into the monthly logs because honestly, a lot of the monthly logs are going to be spanning full spreads. So what else? We did mention the idea of doing a meal planner. So I'm going to put that in there because that one's not so bad. Yeah. Always makes me smoke when you talk about the things I say a lot in your videos, but never mention the future me problems one. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the thing, you know, when I'm trying to think of stuff that I say commonly, it's like mind blank, 100%. Yeah. 
does, does doesn't come to mind. Oh, like what you would love your eye for rainbow is excellent. I'd love if you could do a rainbow swatch for all the calligraphs and make a printable. Oh, yep. Yeah. And then they'll introduce more calligraphs and then I'll have to redo it. Jeez, Monica. But yeah, that'd be kind of cool, eh? <laughs> it'd be quite nice. I, uh, I do love a good rainbow. But I am actually quite liking this little black and white and grey kind of vibe that we're going with here. Even if these greys don't match each other and that makes me a little sad. Makes me a little sad. But that's okay. Alrighty, so this is our mini little task list. That's looking cute. What else do we want to have? We said we were going to do a meal planner of some description. I'm thinking it would be very much like... I would probably just focus on it for dinners, if I'm honest. Like... A, I feel like it would just be a week per. We have 13. 7, 1, 2, 1, 2, 7... One, two, three, four, five, five. That's not helpful. Hmm. Ah, oh, well, have fun on your uh, walking. I'm gonna try to say it fancy like so the dog don't hear. <laughs> Bye, Monica. Uh, we're gonna make this a meal planner. Meal plan. There we go. But this meal plan will probably be more specifically focused on just the main the main meals of the day rather than with snacks as well because there's not a lot of space unless we do it in two columns and then you've got like enough rows for each of them. Hmm. Hmm. So, we'll need a header row then. A header, because we can do it for like lunch and dinner or something. Header row, Monday. Okay, Monday. And then Tuesday. And then Wednesday. Wednesday. And then Thursday, Friday, yep, Saturday, and then Sunday, and then this would just be like extra space. <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. I'll be okay with it. I could always get some washi tape out and just fill extra space because that's typically how I would do things. Uh, and then we're going to go... Do I want it... I kind of do want it closed in. I think that it'll look a little better if it's closed in. Yeah, we'll do it closed in. Uh, so we're going to do the side panels by, by closed in or enclo enclosed, I suppose, is a better way to say it. It means that I'm going to put the side horizontal lines on along with these horizontal ones I'm going to do the vertical ones so it's actually like a boxed in table rather than open like we've got over on this side where it doesn't have the uh, side panel lines going down on the vertical direction if you know what I mean you know what I mean <laughs> yeah i'm thinking it, it'll be like a meal plan just for dinners kind of a thing and then it could be the type of thing that you either put book laminate over the top of it and turn it into kind of like a, almost like a whiteboard style page so you just write in it with either a whiteboard marker or a permanent marker or something like that. Probably could have spaced that better, but it's fine. Um, or you could use post-it kind of notes and post-it kind of notes. Come on. Post-it notes and, and go over it that way. Let's see. Do I have any available? I don't have any that aren't bright, flipping blue, it seems, but they would sit here. 
and you could write in what they were and then switch them out and stuff so you'd probably have a little like stockpile of these post-its in the back of your notebook or something like that. Do I have any that aren't aggressively fluoro? Hmm, this looks like the right colour for aggressively not fluoro, right? That's just, that's just not the business. <laughs> I don't think I have any that are, uh, I'm trying to say like not offensive, but I don't really consider these colours to be offensive per se. Per se, per se. They're just something that's a little bit more neutral. Because I've got ones that are, uh, I'll just tip all these out. <laughs> I've got these ones, but they're the kinds that are harder to write on. I think this must have come from Archer and Olive. Whereas these ones are the wrong size, so we can put those back into the posted bin. So many posters. So many posters. Monthly challenges. Like smaller, but still the wrong size. These ones are a light blue, which actually would fit fairly nicely across there, but we'll put those out just in case. Um, but yeah, these ones are all like the regular poster brands so that they are all very vibrant. And that's not quite what we're aiming for in terms of this, so we can put those to the side. But I'm wondering, like, this one technically, I mean, I've got a black one, which is kind of nice. I think that's actually maybe a couple, I'm not sure. That one actually fits quite well, but because it's that shiny stuff, it's not actually right onable. Right onable. Uh, and this one is technically right onable, and it is smaller, which is kind of nice. But I don't think I want it, so. <laughs> I would like to have an example that you could actually write on, but I want one that's maybe a little bit skinnier than... Like, I like this one because it is skinny, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, this one is also skinny but hard to write on. Um, these ones are all really hard to write on. But... Does it matter if it is just an example? Here we go. Meals. <laughs> so bright. Absolutely not. We'll do the pale blue ones, because at least then I can write on them. And it is only blue on one page, so... Oh gosh, I really shouldn't have pulled all of these out of here, because now my little post-it bin is a mess. Such a mess. I do actually have more neutral... Oh god, that was an awful noise, I apologise. Um, more neutral looking post-its, but this is, this is a notepad, not post-its. Look at that, isn't that satisfying? That's beautiful. Anyways, putting that to the side. Um, but I do have some more neutral coloured post-it notes over here. Um, they're just the big ones, so I would have to cut them up myself. But it is just a just an ideas video, so we could use them. I don't really want to use my craft paper ones. I could use the... what's this? Marble type one? If I use black, I have to write on it with white gel pen, and that is Nemesis, so no. <laughs> and then these two are just notepads, so they, they don't work. But maybe I can use this guy here. I, um, I will say that although these notepads are kind of cute, uh, they do not stick well at, at all. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the adhesive side on them is, is not good. Ooh, ooh, actually... I bought these, but they kind of, oh gosh, they're sticky over the entire back. Which wouldn't actually be that bad, because then I can just write on them. Let's see, I think that it's going to be too big. That is seriously curly. If I just do two, two rows, that could work. And then pull it up, but then it's like, not super adhesive. Let's see. Hmm, unsure. Put that, we'll put that to the side. Hi, Mia Mouse. Is that like Mia as in like your name is Mia? Or Mia, Mia Mouse as in like I'm a mouse? Mia Mouse. I think we'll stick with this one. That seems like a non offensive idea. <laughs> like I'm not offended. I'm not offended by the idea of it. And we'll put that, put that drawer back in where it's supposed to go. Oh, nice, you got a dotted bullet journal, I love that. Yeah, I personal preferences for dotted too, so it's exciting to, to have that. Mia name. 
Excellent. Well, hello, Mia. Hello, Heather. Hello to everybody. Hello, all the people. <laughs> also, Tink, drink right. <laughs> so, we are going to... I obviously put this in so that I could have a header of some description. So, I'm thinking what we're going to do is we are going to... What do we have? We've got seven and a half across. What a fabulously annoying number. Seven and a half, 14, 15. Okay, that's that's enough for three columns of five. One, two, three. I'm going to scrap the idea of doing the post-its because you can totally do post-its, but I'm just being lazy. <laughs> and I'm going to draw in the verticals. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to have it so that it is breakfast, lunch, dinner. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to need to flip my journal around because it's sitting on the uh, spine edge of the page and that's kind of moving away from where I actually want the pen to sit. So save myself the effort. So I'm going to put this here. It's going to be a little easier. So we will have a column for each of the main meals that this hypothetical person is in theory actually using. <laughs> Because you have the Coke Zero, you shall tink. Indeed. Alrighty. Breakfast. Lunch. And dinner. And this could be the type of thing that you set up each week and you plan out your meal. Or what I would be more inclined to do is either write it in pencil and erase it. Or cover the page with... um like book contact paper so that you can reuse the page. I'll show you what I mean by that. We're going to get some book contact paper. It's not paper. It's like a plasticky kind of thing. Uh, where did I put it? There you are, my child. So it's this kind of shiny plasticky stuff, yeah, um, that you kind of use to cover um, like school books effectively so that then they can kind of you know <laughs> last a little bit better um and i'm going to cut away that much i think because that'll be plenty skizzles please uh will that be too much no that looks that looks about right so that's the line that i want to cut along which of course i've put this in the most inconvenient place possible to be able to cut this up and we have to be careful not to uh, knock over my drink in the process. <laughs> I can't remember how wide I wanted it. There we go. So if it's about yay wide, we'll just cut it along here. And then we can cut off any extra that we have, so it's all good. I don't know if it's super visible, but there is a grid on the back uh, that you can use to help cut the amount that you need. And no more, no less type of a thing. These scissors are not the business, though. They are... They have been hit by the struggle bus. There we go. Put you to the side. Yeah, it's kind of like a lamination type thing. It's just that it's a little bit hard to laminate a journal page. Uh, you can always laminate a card and stick it into your journal. I don't have a laminator though. So this is a good option for people who do not have a laminator. <laughs> And who want to just stick something over the top of their page. So we effectively have our little shiny piece of contact paper that we can stick over the top of this part. Uh, or, or just the grid, maybe. Um, so that then we can reuse the grid. Yeah? Uh, so the nice part is, is that because we've drawn the lines underneath, we don't have to worry about um, <laughs> erasing the lines or having to redraw the lines out or anything like that. Because that can be less than fun. So if we take the side of our contact paper here and we stick it carefully in line with both directions please. Indeed carefully because uh, nobody wants nobody wants a mess. That would be upsetting. There we go. We'll just press it down with our finger so that we get rid of any bubbles kind of as we go. Um, so as you can see though, my piece of paper, or well, piece of contact paper that I bought here, is distinctly bigger than the box that I'm working with. So I don't want to pull the whole back off and try and stick it down uh, because I'm going to have a lot of overhang and it'll be just a little bit messy. So 
What I am going to do though is turn this around. I'm sorry, I have a visitor. Would you like to come say hi? Okay. He's literally just walking up all the way over here to say hi. Hello. <laughs> he says hi. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I only have half an hour for lunch today, so I'll probably do the fish tomorrow. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I am alright with that. Vogel, Vogel was going to make me fish for lunch, but not anymore. No, it's okay. Yeah. Really well, it's because cool. everyone's stealing my lunch break with me. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, have fun on your lunch break, B. Well, have fun at 12.30 on your lunch break then. Jeez. <laughs> Try to be nice and say a nice thing. Get mansplained. Okay. Not even too nice. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> the people say hello, by the way. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> anyway, as we were doing before we so rudely interrupted. Okay, not really. Um, I'm appreciating him telling me that I need to go sort my own lunch out. But I'm just slowly kind of pulling off the back of the contact paper and rubbing it down with my finger as I go because it's only a small area, so my finger will do just fine for this. Um, yeah, we just don't want to have too much overhang that we have to end up cutting off. We're going to probably do that with a craft knife. It's probably the easiest way to go about it because this book contact paper, funnily enough, is made to stick and stay. Uh, so if we get it down on the page, it's going to be a bit of a nuisance to get off again, if that makes sense. Anywho, I'll turn my journal around, trying to make it so that it's coming off as neatly as possible um, without having too much eh, over the side. Anywho, so I'm going to do my craft knifing as I go because I'm that way inclined. I actually probably should change the blade in this craft knife because I, yeah, I don't know if you guys understand this feeling, but you know when you have to do something, uh, this is, this is, you know when you have to do something? That's the worst. Okay, you know when you have to, um, like, I feel like I can't even use a vague example. We're just going to use the actual example, okay? I had to put a tiny screw into something that I was assembling and I was too lazy to go downstairs and get a screwdriver so I tried every other tool that I had in my little pencil tin over there to try and put the screw in. One of which I attempted was this uh, little craft knife and I've of course snapped the end of the craft knife off. But do you understand that feeling? Like it would just be easier like in the long run to go and get the appropriate tool for the job but you're like nah i'm too lazy to go and get the tiny screwdriver i'm just gonna uh try and make my life really flippin difficult by doing this instead because that is that's my kind of party is making things harder than they need to be it seems sometimes not not always do I have a specific day that the lives are scheduled? The lives are always on whatever day of the week it is currently for you. Uh, unless you're here on the replay and then like, no. Uh, but for um, for our live streams, we do do them on Monday my time, Sunday US time. Uh, and then anything in between, depending on where people are at. If you, if you know what I mean. So one of the ways that we could make this easier for ourselves, rather than doing what I'm doing here, is having actually um, kind of uh, sectioned out the amount of uh, stuff that we needed ahead of time. That would have been a good idea, but I didn't do that. So here we are. Uh, there we go. We'll just cut through that. That looks pretty, pretty good. And probably we'll need some more, roughly that much. I, I am being very careful with this considering that I'm not actually going to use this. It's an interesting choice. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. You tiny A6 and now you're both like, yay, I'm so glad that you have like designated uses for your, your little baby journals. Alrighty, we're gonna live as few dare to dream and just go a little bit more ham with this because I was being more careful than is super necessary considering I'm not really using this journal. There we go, that's all good. So we are cutting away the side of this one. Uh, Trying to make it so that then it's just the inside of this box that is the part with the contact paper. But effectively, the contact paper is just going to make it so that then this is reusable. So we can write over it with like a whiteboard marker in particular. See, there you go, this is why we weren't sticking it down like that, because we're ripping up our page. Heathen! Heathen is me! Dun, 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 dun. There we go, not 
not so bad. <laughs> Great success. You like being part of the process and seeing that I like to plan things out. Nice. Or like how I, in theory, plan things out. We're just going to rip that part off it. It's all good. And we can rule over the part that was exposed. Exposed. So the idea with this is that you can effectively end up reusing this uh, over and over because it's just done with um, that contact paper over the top of it. It's just that when you write over it you need to use like a whiteboard marker or something like that or you can use a uh not whiteboard marker what's the word a permanent marker um and then go over it with a whiteboard marker to try and get rid of it type of a thing I mean, do i have an example here that i can use i don't know let's see would this work probably not this is this is a, a vivid which is a, a permanent marker it's like a sharpie um so you could write in here to say like oh for breakfast i'm having toast <laughs> and then for lunch i'm having eggs i don't know what people eat um and then for dinner i'm having i don't know reading <laughs> like or whatever you'd probably use a pen that was distinctly smaller than this because this is obviously a very uh chunky nibbed pen but then the nice part is is that it's permanent marker which means that this doesn't smudge means if I close this and like rub over it and stuff it doesn't transfer either uh, but because we've got that contact paper it doesn't bleed through either like if I used that per permanent marker just straight on this journal paper absolutely would not be the business the thing is now though is that like this is permanent marker on here yeah um this, is, this isn't gonna be able to come off unless we go over it with something else in particular, the thing that you would usually go over it with would be something like a whiteboard marker. Do I have one of those in my office? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, but what do I have in my office that could be used? Probably nothing, honestly. Um, let's see, does water work? No, it's a permanent marker, you dingus. I genuinely don't think I have anything that could go over this. Let's see, you're, you're a crappy orange pen. Do you work? No, you're a water-based marker, so you're not going to work either. Oof, that wasn't good. That was a bad idea. Mm. Oh, okay, you kind of work. There we go. Rub it out with my little my little water-based Tombow. <laughs> For what it's worth, this is an old Tombow that I don't really mind getting a little bit dirty. Uh, I will say, though, when you're doing this, you do have to be mindful of uh, erasing over the edges and smudging your paper because... Um, Ah, there we go. I can totally erase this without the marker. I'm a wizard. Um, if you erase onto your page, then any ink that you have on your little eraser is going to get picked up by the paper. So if you want to be a little bit more aggressive with your erasing, don't just put the uh, contact paper on the grid. Put it on the full page, yeah? So that then it doesn't... Um, it doesn't run the risk of leaving smudge marks all over your paper. But isn't that cute? It's a cute little nifty idea. And then it's like just a little bit shiny because it is like got that contact paper on it. Love it. Alrighty. Cute, cute, cute. Well, team, I have to skadoodle because I have a meeting in approximately two minutes and I really need to go and scoff down some more pretzels. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed seeing these A6 layout ideas, make sure that you like the video so that I know to make more of them and share them with you. For now, though, I'm going to, as I said, scoff pretzels and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Goodbye, gorgeous humans.